Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of The Dialectic, a production of Non-Compete and Overthrow Media. Big Villainous of Overthrow Media will be with us momentarily. We also have our guest, Lil Bill, waiting in the green room, as it were. I am just making a few technical adjustments here. Okay. All right. So uh, how's everybody doing? We're, uh, we're doing great. I'm doing great over here, more or less. It's been very rainy here in Da Nang, Vietnam, but we uh, have a great show for you. It's, it's rainy season, so it will be rainy, I guess, until like probably February, March. So <laughs> we're settling in for that. But anyway, uh, I hope the weather is great wherever you are. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're safe. Um, we got a lot to talk about today. We're going to be talking about uh, religion, the empire of Christianity. I actually don't know much about this topic, so I'm very excited to uh, listen and learn along with the rest of you. Uh, Big Villainous and uh, Little Bill know a lot more about this than I do, so uh, I'll be here mostly to field your questions and and um, and yeah, listen and learn with you, with the, with the rest of you. Uh, we've also got some videos we'll we'll be watching uh, after the interview with Little Bill. Um, some stuff on shoplifting, one of my favorite. Uh, activities to discuss. Of course, we don't endorse any illegal activity here in the non-compete overthrow media universe because that would violate the terms of service of Twitch, YouTube, etc. But we will be yeah, taking a look at video about the uh, technology of shoplifting um, and looking at some of the comments on that video, which will be interesting. We'll be hopefully discussing the scams of trains and electric cars. <laughs> Uh, specifically in the USA, the train, I, there's, a, there's a great video by the armchair urbanist about how trains are basically uh, a huge monopolistic scam in the USA. We'll be taking a look at that, hopefully, if we have time. And uh, maybe talking about some other workers' uh, strikes and that sort of thing as well. But um, I guess, well, let's see. We're still waiting for, for Big Villainous, um, but I don't want Little Bill to have to wait too long. So I guess let's go ahead and uh, introduce our guest for today. A little bit. If you're if you're ready to come on, give me a thumbs up, and I'll and I'll bring you on. Uh, okay, cool. All right. Hello, little Bill. Glad to have you. How you doing? Doing all right. How you doing? I uh, can't complain because um, I do I do it too much anyway, and uh, <laughs> no one gives a shit. But it's good to see you. So so I um big villainous actually introduced me to your channel. Uh, you got a lot of really interesting stuff. I guess if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself and your channel and let folks know about what you do in case they haven't heard of you. All right, sure. Um, I guess uh, the long and short of it, uh, I um, I describe myself as uh, I mean, I I I I I was halfway joking when I said this when I put the description up there because I just needed something to put up there. Is that um, I'm the Black John Stewart. So <laughs> so make Love so it. make a debt make a debt what you will. Um, <laughs> so uh. Yeah, I try to. Uh, I, I I feel like this is that everybody not everybody likes to learn, but everybody loves to laugh, right? So yeah. if I could teach you something uh, by making you laugh first, then there we have it. So yeah, as you can see, I've I, I spent a lot of time focusing on um on issues that uh, primarily center around blackness blackness in america um urban blackness <laughs> uh specifically um but yeah it's 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 uh it's some eclectic stuff in there so y'all come on and y'all uh check it out if you're interested um as you can see i'm not a big fan of ronald reagan <laughs> <laughs> so uh that's a good thing so yeah uh there you have that yeah, great range of topics. Just like a lot, like very creative uh, approach to to a lot of these videos. It's it's very fresh. It's it's a lot different than what you see in a lot of you know like kind of bread tube, left tube kind of stuff. Uh, a lot of media analysis, but also a lot of like kind of more hard hitting stuff. So yeah, I definitely recommend check it. Everybody check it out. There's a link to uh, Little Bill's channel in the description if you're watching on YouTube. But I'm going to put the link in the chat right now anyway, so y'all can go ahead and just click it and subscribe right now. No reason to wait. Um, but hey, Big Villainous is here. Yeah, Welcome. Just, How you doing? I just ninja my way in quietly. You know what I mean? You, you did. <laughs> Snuck in the back door. 
got your got your shades on and uh, and ready to stream. It seems. Uh, how, see, how you been doing? See, I think everybody thinks they're just like uh, luxury sunglasses or something. These are like actually prescriptions. So these are my new glasses. So it's always gonna be like this, y'all. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I love um, the vibe. I love it. It's uh, and I, it's and fantastic. I'm, and I'm legit blind as fuck without them. So it's like. <laughs> <laughs> Well, oh. uh, it's it's good to have you back as well, and uh, yeah, I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna hand the interview over to Big Villainous because, like I said earlier, BP knows a lot more about the ins and outs of today's topic. Uh, so I'm just gonna kind of uh, stand by and maybe ask some questions and stuff every now and then. But yeah, so take it away, Big Villainous. I mean, I was just gonna do it informal because I mean, you know how I do it. Um, but you know, I, I just wanted to talk about like the uh, the Empire of Christianity, right? How it was really created as we know it now, because I think what people don't realize a lot of times, too, is Christianity is not the religion that, Ye that Yeshua or the man they called Jesus practiced at all. And what we pra was practiced now was literally a creation of an empire, right? It was the creation of, like, Constantinople. Um, and I don't know if people heard Nicene Council, but that was literally used to unify his empire. And that's why, he, like, it is the way it is. It's very imperialistic friendly, if you can tell. But the old... Jewish cultures and the old uh, Messianic Jewish cultures weren't that friendly to uh, imperialism. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I just I just start off that way. I mean, uh, do want to just hop into what the uh, talk back and forth about what the uh, Nicene Council was? Because I think a lot of people even know that and know why it existed. So, yeah, I remember talking mm -hmm. about it in church. You know, when I was a kid, they would talk about the Nicene Creed or something like that. But I, yeah, yeah I don't really remember much about it beyond that. So, I'd like to hear more about that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, well, you know, before we even get into that, um, I like that point that you brought up um, about how uh, that that's the thing that uh, that gets lost in translation a lot. And even if you uh, if you uh, read the Gospels, you'll see that uh, uh, Jesus. Well, I mean, I, that, that that's the Greek name, uh, but we all talk about the same person. Um, his whole purpose wasn't to start a new religion. It wasn't to start a new anything like that. Jesus was very, very Jewish, right? Um, Christianity, as we know it today, um, its origins are very, very uh, imperialistic. Um, and I, I guess we'll talk a little bit more about how, how we, how we even got up to the Nicene Council um, in a second. I guess if. Um, a villain this wants me to go in that route but basically what had happened was that um in the early church uh they uh had a controversy over uh basically over the nature of jesus's divinity right you had one side that was saying uh that you know god and jesus are one and the same and then the other side saying that, well, God beget Jesus, that he's literally the son of God. So uh, he can't be divine. So that's where the big division was uh, was between the, the early Christians. Um, so at the end of the day, Constantine, and we'll, and we'll get into how Constantine even got involved in the first place. Constantine basically said, all right, y'all come together. Y'all hash this out because, you know, we need big group of folk that's going to uh that, that that's basically going to help me uh <laughs> become constantine the great right so that that's pretty much how that all how that all went down um and uh so yeah if you ever really wanted to know what the night what the nicene council was really all about that's really what it was about was it was about hashing out that that discrepancy between um between the early Christians and then they wound up having um a second council that's where uh you know the biblical canon was put together so all of those books that you see in the bible that's where they decided what's going to go in what's going to stay out so all of those apocryphal books that you know uh, the Gospel of Mary or Thomas and all the other stuff that you know you hear about, but you don't you don't get taught about in Sunday school. You know, I, I, I they they just left them out. They just just you know they had the different reasons for why they left each. I can't go into the specific details for each and every book, but they they uh they figure all right these are the ones we're going to stick with. And you know what I I I'll, I'll put it like this. Um, 
And if you look at the history of the Bible being translated over and over and over and over and over again, you see that there's a prevailing theme of of a uh, reinforcing of you know establishing or reinforcing the primacy of whoever was in charge at that time if you look at the history like for example the king, king james, james bible. bible yeah yeah that the, the king james bible was literally created for no other reason than to reaffirm the primacy of the bishops and of king james himself because you had um all right if y'all want me to, if y'all want me to tell this part i'll go into detail with detail in this part because because a lot of people evidently don't know the history of the king james bible um so basically what happened was during that time uh the most popular translation you this is like we like uh 10 toes down into reformation time now so uh the most popular translation was called the Geneva Bible, right? And the Geneva Bible was heavy on, you know, uh, what were at the time considered progressive ideas. It was heavy on, and and it was, um, they called it the first study Bible because all of the stuff that we see today, like prior to this the bible wasn't broken up in the the books weren't broken up in the chapters weren't broken up in the verses you know it had concordance it had all of those you know like quality of life pieces that you know we take for granted today um but also it had stuff in there like it was calling um it was calling the bishops like a uh, horse of locusts and stuff like that and obviously the bishops of of the, the Anglican Church, Church of England, they weren't trying to have that. So um, in order to, I guess, hash things out between them, King James uh, the, the sixth said, all right, this is what we're going to do. We're going to write a new translation and we're going to take parts of the Bishop's Bible. That was the, the Bible that the Anglican Church was using. And we're going to take parts of the Geneva Bible and we're going to put them together but when you write it, you got to write it in a way that lets lets people know that I'm in charge. Right. That the bishops are in charge. Right. So that's how we got the, the, uh, the King James Version. And we basically been riding with that until like until like basically until this century that it that the king james started falling out of favor as the as the uh the translation of choice so yeah they again if you just if you just look at the history of it you know anybody who's ever had any position of power they've been able to use the popular religion of the time which so happened to be christianity and use that as a vehicle to uh to basically to sedate the masses yeah, I mean, I think that another good point that always stood out to me too from coming from another perspective was like um when I go taking all the way back to the Council of Nicaea, I mean, I think one of the things that also gets slept on is how much um like Greco Roman like uh uh what people would call paganism was it called paganism, but you know what I mean, like uh, yeah. was a, a component of it, right? Because I know there was um I'm I'm a little rusty, so forgive me if I'm like a little um not as articulate as I would like to be, but um there was a component of like the com conflicts having between different sects of Christianity, but also the between like the uh, let's just say pagans because I don't know what the actual name of the uh, group was at the time, but like the the, pag the Roman and Greco pagans, and so that's why there, they had a lot of like when they brought up the bishops, a lot of the folks didn't even really believe, and like Constantine himself didn't really believe uh, in it. They what they did is they like were bringing in a lot of the also pagan tradition. That's why you got like mm -hmm. a lot of the intercessors. Um, when talking about like their representative of uh, some of the gods they worship, so then he could like unify this empire. And one of the reasons I want to personally really felt like this is a good topic too was because like it's really important to realize how much it was just what these belief systems are were based off imperialism. Like like now mm -hmm. um, because before that, I mean like uh, the, if you go to Tunak or Tura, like there's a lot of things that weren't incorporated into it uh, traditionally, but also even within the um, actual text that got incorporated lit later around the Nicene Council, like like mm -hmm. the whole name Lucifer, 
Like that's not in the Tanakh at all. Like it doesn't mm. exist. Like they add that in on top. So that comes from like different own traditions. But the thing is, it's really I think that's why it's really important is because it has ever since then been used as a tool of imperialism. Right. Um, and I'm I'm gonna be like transparent. I'm like no longer like someone who believes in scripture, but I used to, and I really I took it seriously, and that's where I kind of got mm. these stances from is because of that. But I also there's a lot of lessons to be learned there, and I think. Especially on the left, we try to want to shrug our way away from it, whereas I feel mm-hmm. like that is also struggling away from the analysis of what we're living in. You know what I mean? So, yeah, and a huge part of our culture, like for sure. Yeah, you got to understand it. Yeah, I mean, I, at, at the very least, that's 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 always been my thing. I I mean, for I mean, y'all y'all probably already uh, saw by the screenshots and, and whatever um, that I'm 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 still a believer myself. Um, uh, that being said. Uh, like y'all are saying, it's important, even if you're not, to uh, to understand, you know, at the very least, how we got to where we are. Because it's real easy to just uh, say, to just go ahead and, and dismiss it all and say, oh, yeah, you know, this, that, and the third thing, bada, 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 bada. But, you know, the real history of it, right? It, 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 I, I, I'll put it, I'll put it like this. It's like, you know, now you know. I'm, I'm not even going to use that uh, use that analogy. But if you if you actually look at the history, and I and I tell people this all the time, like if you, for instance, like we won't even uh, go into the the early church days right now. If you just look at the Mosaic Law, there are a ton of statutes in there that, to a modern lens look and sound a lot like socialism right like a matter of fact i was talking to somebody about this today um uh they were because you know one of people's favorite uh passages is uh leviticus eighteen twenty two. you know man should not lay with a man as a woman blah 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 and i said yeah but the funny thing about that is that that's one that's one statue and the whole next uh uh, chapter, right? Because we read it in chapters. Talks about uh, granting direct access to the means of production to the poor. It says to leave the corners of your fields open so that the poor can come and glean from them, right? And it's a ton of statutes in there like that. It's um, you know, uh, 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 uh provisions for reparations. It says that you know, uh, if you have a slave right um that uh after they you know have done their time and what have you uh you send them away but you don't send them away empty-handed right you send them away with with goats oxen clothes whatever um matter of fact it says that uh uh you know, I, 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 sorry, it's late over here on the East Coast. But, but my point being that when you actually, when you just study the, 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 the Hebrew part, it's a ton in there. Uh, because again, if we're gonna go with the biblical narrative, I, I'm, I'm not saying historical. I'm just saying going with the biblical narrative and understand where the Hebrews are coming from then it makes total sense for them to say, all right, you know, don't do to folk what was done to y'all for 400 years or however long it was. So I say that to say it's important for us to at least understand what it is that we're really talking about instead of basing our analysis on a caricature because it's real easy to get caught up, you know, in pop media and pop culture, you know, all of the, the jokes that get tossed around here, there and everything, everywhere about um about what Christianity was and always is. And then you take that as truth because that's what you hear, right? But when you actually know the truth behind it, then you begin to say, all right, well, I understand, even if I don't believe myself, I understand how somebody could read this and say, okay, this is where my um this is uh what my activism is built on this is what you know my belief system is built on you feel me um if we just look at the gospels themselves jesus's whole thing and i tell people this all the time the first thing jesus makes his public 
ministry uh, known by saying that I've come to bring liberation to the oppressed. That's literally the first thing he says, you know, if we're going to go according to the biblical narrative, literally the first thing he says is the spirit of the Lord is upon me to uh, to, to, to set the oppressed free, to bring sight to the blind, to preach good news to the poor, right? And that was his song and dance all throughout the gospels. If you look at it, every, it follows the same thing of liberation for the oppressed so i say that to say like villainous was saying it's important for us to at least understand what we're talking about before we uh start talking about it yeah i mean i think um too it's really it's really important to realize that uh at least for, especially for people who do believe uh that the thing that was spoken about in 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 that book and in the different books within it um is not what christianity is right it's not what it became right so the, the right. what we know is christianity literally was contradictory to a lot of the philosophy that were actually saying they believe in in fact it's kind of wild because one thing you notice a lot of times is people read their daily breads but they don't read their bible right like they, and, and i'm right. not saying i'm not right. trying to be like oh like y'all should go get religious i'm not saying that i don't even believe it anymore so i'm gonna be very clear to everybody so not someone's gonna figure it out but what i'm but what i will say is like one of the things that's really interesting about it is how uncorrelated a lot of what exists today and what has shaped our society because empire grew with christianity christianity made like constantine's empire um become a reality and then it translated into every empire pretty much in the western hem in the western powers thereafter and beyond honestly because we even talk about like the influence on um on islam to, to, uh, and like literally coming it also being abrahamic abrahamic belief system right so um yeah i mean i think those the, the influence of that is really crucial but also really crucial to see like how it's differentiated from what the actual belief system is like I, like i've told people before it's like Islam is closer to the original belief system than that Judaism is closer to the original belief system than the daily like Christians and, and there's a reason for that mm -hmm. and it's because right. it, when it was constructed and I, I, I think uh, constructed was meant to serve a different purpose than when the scriptures were written that it was based off of, right so like when the church was made um, and we a lot of times we, people just like well it's Catholics yeah but everybody came from Catholics at this point like all the religions that exist now all the segments like we're talking about Protestant or whatever came out of the Catholicism that was created um at that point um and I think that when it came before that there were so many different uh variants that were had completely different politics depending on where you were right because you mm -hmm. have the Gnostics on one yeah. end you right. have like way more like orthodox jewish leaning people on another end and there's there, there's the different uh variations um that existed that had different politics um but then when we see the christianity as we know it being created we see like the creation of uh empire as we know it to be honest i think a lot of it a lot of empire changed based off of what constantine choices were and was able to um be able to inspire empires after it to fall in that same trend that lead all the way to manifest destiny. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah. I don't know if you feel me on that or not, but <laughs> no, no, you, uh, y'all, y'all, give me a a quick second. My my daughter came in here. She's supposed to be asleep. I'm I'm going to be <laughs> like twenty Sounds seconds. Very adorable. I'll be right back. <laughs> all right, no problem. Like, good, good, good. Uh, I mean, I just uh, think. I'm just, I'll just keep random for a second, but I just think that's, yeah, that's a really important thing because I think, um, I like I said, I think there's on the left, especially there's knee jerk like reaction to unless they're Quakers because a lot of left, left there's a lot of the Quakers. I'm not trying to invisibilize y'all, I know y'all exist, um, but uh, to, to just push away and not like it, investigate it, which as, as someone who does who's actually leaning towards uh, direction like voodoo and stuff and trying to learn more about that. Um, I still keep in mind all the things I learned when I was in a joint, when I was studying that and when I was studying scripture and stuff and I was studying the Christian history that I had access to because the only books I really had access to um, besides what people uh, I could books I could borrow um, mm -hmm. left me like really understand the empire to a whole different level. Um, and I think um, that uh, I'm really appreciative for that, even though I don't uh, believe, but even it's really good also to know what uh it's also good that I studied so much in 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 uh, prison because it also allows me to like roast all the like homophobes at the pride parades with their signs. <laughs> 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 go in on them because they don't know yeah. shit. They don't actually read their 
reading your yeah, Bible. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That that that's why that that's the craziest thing, though, man. Is that the the most Bible thumpingest folk do not even know what's in there. Like I I I, I promise you all. The, that's why I don't, I don't I don't even debate with folk no more. I don't even be because. They, because it's it's in the but I I tell two of my favorite quotes on religion. I don't know if y'all are familiar with um with um with Feuerbach. He had a um yeah. he had so all right so so y'all know who I'm talking about. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, right. Um. So two of my favorite quotes on religion come from him. Is he says that knowledge of God is self knowledge. Consciousness of God is self-consciousness. And then he also said that every society creates God in his image. So at the end of the day, right, is folk, they take it and they, I don't even want to say cherry pick, but they mold it and shape it in a way that is reflective of their interests, that is reflective of their of that society that's why american christianity and i say this all the time is literally just white supremacy with a clergy collar right yeah because because they because they took it and they said all right we can use this to justify what we're doing to black folks we can use this to justify what we're doing to indigenous folk even though um and and i and this is a shameless plug in the uh, and the who invented racism video, I talk about how the whole, you know, curse of Ham, the, it, um, it, even if you want to just go based upon the biblical narrative, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't line up like black folks, according to the biblical narrative, don't even descend from that line that was cursed. But because they needed a method, right, to justify something that was otherwise unjustifiable, they said, all right, well, who who wanna who wanna say anything to God? If God says what it is, says this is what it is, then we got it. Then it's justified, right? And so, well, I, I, and and I don't want to uh, get too much um, off topic, but um, I, I guess I'm, I'm gonna bring this back to um, to uh, to the to the Constantine piece. So the the thing the thing with Constantine is. Right. So it, 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 it's kind of it. So based on who you ask, Constantine either was introduced to Christianity through his mother, um, Helena, or the the more I'll say the more sort of propaganda is kind of a narrative is that he wound up converting his mother later but for the majority of constantine's life he either way the majority of his life he was he was quote unquote pagan but whatever um now uh we all know the popular mythology you know he saw the pie cross in the sky that said conquer by this whatever um but did all right so if you ask me so this is this is what was happening right is that during this time what people forget a lot of times is that constantine during this time was co-emperor with uh with licinius right and um the, the issue that constantine had was because of his mother who likely was a concubine helena was likely a concubine he had sort of an air of illegitimacy about him right so constantine and licinius eventually wound up becoming uh political rivals now during this time you know the christians were were pretty much like roaches right you try to you try to uh you know like babies kids we don't die we multiply right like they just kept coming it, it, it didn't matter <laughs> like so and, and that's another thing let me back up real quick is that a lot of people are under the the misconception that you know from nero all the way to constantine or just like perpetual persecution about that that that's not how it went um most of there were periods of state-sponsored persecution, but they were sporadic, right? Uh, the Christians, for the most part, were seen as as a nuisance at at best, right? Um, it really wasn't until Diocletian, right, that it became 
a real big thing about persecuting Christians. Because the thing about Rome was that Rome, unlike the Greeks, they really couldn't care less, you know, about what religion you practice. What they they it, they didn't care. But the thing with them was, uh, and and I and I don't know if um if Villainous was alluding to this earlier. Um, the thing with the Romans was that uh that uh Caesar was supposed to be uh. I don't know if you say an avatar or a spokesman for um for um Invictus, for Sol Invictus, the the uh the chief god of the um of the imperialist cult, right? Um and so as far as uh the Romans were concerned, if you if you defy uh Invictus, then you defy Rome. And that's where the problem came in at. Because remember the majority of the other cultures they conquered they were already polytheistic anyway so you know adopting a handful of other guys really wasn't no big thing to them but then when you get to palestine that's when you have a problem because the jews by this time you know yahweh is their god right there's no god but but yahweh and they won't acknowledge you know invictus they won't acknowledge soul invictus so the Romans interpret that as they don't acknowledge Rome. And then you put in the whole fact of, you know, the messianic prophecy, you know, of the kingdom of Judah being reestablished at some point. And so the Rome, the Roman Palestine wound up being a hot spot for the Roman Empire. You know, we know that the temple wound up getting destroyed. I forget exactly what year, but it wasn't long after um after um uh after the crucifixion that the the second temple was destroyed uh when there was a, a little uh rebellion that broke out there um and 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 here's another interesting piece is that tiberius actually uh wanted to have christianity recognized as uh its own religion because in his mind uh if the christians you know had some clout, then that would uh, cause problems for the Jews, right? And so now we playing these two sides against each other. You know that gives us a little bit more, uh, a little bit more ability to make that region stable, right? But the Senate just wasn't having it. They just said, "No, we we're not going to go that route." So that's so that that's a little interesting sidebar just to. You know, because people have this idea that, you know, from the jump, you know, Christians were just getting persecuted left and right when that really wasn't how it was. Really, the persecute it was more localized. It was really, you know, just like local mobs or whatever that had a problem with Christians that, all right, we're going to go throw rocks at them or we're going to go beat them up or whatever the case may be. Um, but I get fast forward to Diocletian. Diocletian was the one that said, all right, you know y'all y'all are being defiant y'all are being you know insubordinate to soul invictus so we're going to start you know really committing mass persecution against y'all um but it didn't matter by this point you know christianity had become such a, a widespread thing um that folk basically what a lot of folk were doing was that they were saying all right we'll worship invictus <laughs> and we're just kind of buying their time right so by the time Constantine comes on the scene, Christianity is like a is like an unstoppable force. And so he recognizes this and he says, all right, here's a group of people that if I cozy up to them, this will give me the clout I need. Right. This will give me the public support that I need. You feel me to to give me some uh, legitimacy against uh, Licinius. So. This is when, you know, what uh, Constantine is really the one that put the bug in Licinius's ear because Licinius, he, he really wasn't trying to hear it either. But he was the one that put the bug in Licinius's ear that was like, you know, we need to, you know, uh, uh, kind of fall back and, and chill with these Christians. Right. We need to, you know, because look at how rapidly they're growing. So this is where the Edict of Milan comes in that says, all right, you know, we're going, we're saying that nationally, 
we're going to tolerate Christianity. You can't persecute Christians for just being Christians anymore, right? And eventually, you know, Constantine is building up this goodwill with the Christians, and eventually that snowballs into him being able to have the support to basically once him and Licinius ultimately wind up falling out, you know, Constantine, he wins, has Licinius executed. Um, Constantine, you know, is entrenched as the emperor and uh, eventually he does wind up converting, getting baptized and all this or whatever. But the point that I'm, I'm trying to get at here is that at, at the end of the day, you know, um, it was political that 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 that's just what it was, was that he he saw an opportunity, you know, to ride a wave uh, into uh, giving himself the clout that he wouldn't have had otherwise. Because, again, the rest of the folk are like, you know, yeah, we don't know about this guy. You know, his mom is this and bada, 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 whatever. You know, th this is our guy. So he hopped on to this. And so basically from that time until honestly now it's been like a like a uh, a hand in hand relationship between the church and empire because somebody saw an opportunity and that and that's basically been the story from day one is somebody saw an opportunity to uh basically to exploit a group of people and exploit their beliefs and to uh use that to propel them to a place where they can say all right we're going to do x because god told me right we're going to go do this that's how we get the crusades you know we're going to go in here and we're going to you know go go mess with these muslims they ain't bothering nobody mind their own business but god said go take the holy land back for him when really it was you know Let's go take uh, the Holy Land back so, you know, we could have a nice little uh, a little villa on the side of uh, on the side of the uh, the Red Sea somewhere. Right. So that's basically how that how that thing went, um, even into the, the Reformation period, because, you know, again, slavery was the Protestants. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So that. So that so once once you once you cross the uh, once you cross the Atlantic, that ain't the Catholic Church no more. Once you get in, well, at, at least in North America, right? Once you get into the into the colonies, that's not the Catholic Church anymore. That's that's Protestants doing that. That's Protestants saying, you know, black folks are inferior because the Bible says, right? So yeah, that's 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 basically how that's been how that's been going since that time. Yeah, I actually wanted to touch a little bit more on the uh, around Nicene Council time. I mean, I think the one thing I think that's really interesting and always really st struck me is, and it goes to like the opiate of the masses argument, right? Well, one of the things mm -hmm. when they did that is by bringing in, like I, I mentioned, like the which was originally the Catholics, I know, but like the uh, the intercessors and being able to be able to sign that and associate that with the pagan gods, they were able to like kind of homogenize or do the melting pot type thing. Uh, oh, yeah, back yeah, in yeah, those yeah. days to be able to strengthen mm -hmm. the, like their their forces too, right? Because if you got to be, yeah. oh, everybody's under this banner now of Christianity because the people who before didn't really have to give up their old gods, they just had to change right. the names, right? And mm -hmm. then the Christians are the fundamental uh, flag now. Now, mind you that it, it's not the same thing at this like a few years later right it's not the same mm -hmm. thing as it was before the nicene council but um it, it had like a melting pot effect which i think is really um i think is really important because i think that's a it's been it still is used as a big mm -hmm. melting pot effect and it has been a, a big thing to be able to unify uh peoples uh, under these empires and i think uh it's, it, that's why I think it's like a, it's, it was a game changer in, in so many ways. But yeah. for, I feel like even for empires, right? It just it's changed the game and allowed the Western powers to become what they become. Because like like you said, we even go to like the the uh, Crusades, which is like how much of the wealth that was able mm -hmm. to even invest into slavery at the time right. was getting from stealing that initially and then continue to steal shit and continue to steal shit, right? Like mm -hmm. how much of it was based off that like auspice of uh of this religion that they they pretty much created. Now the, the scriptures that was based off of wasn't created. They didn't create, but the the religion that they had 
to unify these empires was, you know what I mean? And so I was just kind of like, I'm always left thinking about that because I think it made a humongous impact on what our like daily reality is, but also Mm -hmm. like um, the Western powers, right? The Western powers exist because of, I mean, I, I, oh, at least I would argue the Western powers exist in the way they do because of that decision. I don't think it would have ever got to this component um, if it wasn't for that. If they weren't able to have something where they could be like, oh, if you go and kill a bunch of people for me, you'll go to heaven and shit like mm-hmm. that. You know what I mean? I think that was like fundamental in shaping their power structure. And if it didn't happen, it wouldn't exist. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, I actually think that the scriptures and, and, and people believe in it would definitely still exist, but their power structure, the Western powers, wouldn't be the Western powers. I think right. they, been, they probably wouldn't even conquer America. Let's be real. So, well, I mean, listen, we probably wouldn't have Western society, honestly, the, 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 to just keep it a buck. Because I mean, and and, it, and this is this is another big thing about it too is that that we uh I, I think we kind of diminish this aspect of it is that it was only a handful of people reading Bibles, <laughs> right? It was only the powerful people, right? So yeah. like so yeah, if if I'm the only one that that got access to the information, you know uh you know. Bibles weren't mass produced until what fourteen, whatever the year was. <laughs> so plus it was all in Latin, which most people didn't speak. Right, so there was another barrier. Right, right, which was not the the common dialect. Right, it was it was not the the language of the people. Right, so even the even the the vast majority of time, you know, Bibles that were written, you know, were written in the language of the court were written in the language of, of the powerful. Only the powerful had access to that information, had access to that knowledge. And, you know, you just got to hope <laughs> that the person who's telling you this this is what it says, all right, I don't know no better. I can't read Latin. I could barely, you know, read my mother tongue if I can, right? So that that's a big part of it is access to information. And, and even now you see... Uh, a big part of you know the way that um you know stuff like QAnon and 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 PizzaGate and all that other garbage, right? How that gets pro- proliferated is misinformation, right? Is mm-hmm. people just put something out there and nobody d- takes the time to do the legwork to actually figure out, okay, well, is this legit or not, right? So now imagine you in a position where you can't even do that. Right. You don't have Internet. You don't have a book. You don't have a library you go to. Right. You just got your local parish or wherever you go to where, you know, you sit in mass, you know, and they, you know, praying in Latin the whole time. Right. You can't make heads or tails of what they're saying. But all you know is that this person is the gatekeeper between you and heaven. Right. Because also you gotta keep in we gotta keep in, in perspective that um man people's lives were miserable <laughs> in 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 the Middle Ages right so for most people that was really what 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 it what it was all building up to you know death was constantly around the corner for one and then people that did survive is like life is miserable anyway. Like the best I can hope for is to make it to heaven anyway. So if somebody telling me, all right, all I got to do is go over to Jerusalem, you know, to Acre or Damascus or whatever, you know, and kill a bunch of Muslims and I can go to heaven. All right, bet. Sign me up. Where's my sword? Right. So, you know, it, 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 it it's just it's fascinating to me how. I think it all comes back to, you know, uh, 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 access and restricting access to information because maybe I'm an optimist, but I would like I like to believe that, you know, if more people had direct access, you feel me, um, to those letters. Right. The way that they did pre Constantine, because that's the part that a lot of people forget is that it wasn't until uh, Nicaea that. The Bible became the Bible. It was just a bunch of letters floating around, you know, uh, uh, the the late um, the the world of late antiquity. It was just a bunch of, you know, just letters going to this church, letters going to that church, or whatever. And they would just stand up and just read them to everybody, right? Um, but if people had access to that and could actually read and say, "Oh, wait a minute, that's not what it say," right? And I don't I don't see this anywhere in here. 
then perhaps they wouldn't have been so susceptible, you feel me, uh, to uh, uh, to the ruling powers, um, basically manipulating them and exploiting them to the place of creating tons, basically creating empire for like the next, what, at least a thousand, years, more than that, like a millennium and a half based on the fact that folk don't know any better, right? So yeah, that's that's the thing, man. Is that the the two go hand in hand? You you cannot tell the history of empire. You cannot tell the history of the West, honestly, without talking about without talking about religion, without talking about Christianity. Because again, like you were saying, what is that? You know that 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 unifying force, right? Because you know. You got Slavs over here. You got folk in the British Isles over here. You got folk in the Balkans over here. You got folk, you know, I, you got to think about just how wide the swath the Roman Empire was. You're talking all the way in Portugal in the, in, in, in the West and going as far east as, um, as Palestine. That's a huge swath of land, man. That's you know, thousands of cultures, thousands of languages. Well, how are we going to unify them all? With God, <laughs> with religion. Yeah. Everybody want to go to heaven, <laughs> right? <laughs> Everybody want to go to heaven. So this is how we bring them all together and say, you feel me? If you want to go to heaven, this is how you do it. Or better yet, really what the way that they put it if you don't want to go to hell <laughs> mm -hmm. then you follow this formula right don't question the church don't question the emperor don't question what we doing because we know better we got the access we got the information just trust what we telling you is the truth right and we have western civilization it See, interesting. There's a couple of things I wanted to uh, hit on. You said uh, one. I, I want to say that, like, I'm gonna buy a little bit and be like, look, it's interesting how the fact of not reading and not actually like from when people couldn't to even now, there's just a tradition of not reading, just following your pastor or preacher or whatever. You know what I mean? Uh, how that still seems to be like majorly passed down, right? Like that seems to be mm -hmm. like the, the the go to, and it it's really interesting how. I mean, I think we do this with a lot of things, not just like religion, but like we pass down mm -hmm. these things to generations and you don't have to necessarily keep everybody ignorant of what we're realizing or like at least what I realized. <laughs> you don't have to necessarily keep everybody ignorant of like how to read something to keep them from reading something if it's been a tradition to just follow your leader, right? Follow that one mm -hmm. person who then when they go to like their, their seminary or whatever, they're taught how to interpret this shit. Right, they're taught how to read it, and they imply things that don't even that aren't even within it. I mean, and, and mm -hmm. one of the interesting things that I also think about is uh, the perfect example of that is hell. Everybody's like, "Well, no, hell's no, 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 Sheol, Sheol mm -hmm. was Sheol was, which means the grave." Like, right. you know what I mean, so it's not, it's not, it's not the same thing. So when you hear Revelations, hell, like, or like, like a fire thing, right? Hell's like a fire. Like, no, it's not. How can you throw hell into itself? It doesn't make sense, right? <laughs> like, you go to Revelation, right? It's it all that. It's like, no, Sheol, like death. Death will be thrown like a fire, be destruction, death, whatever, whatever. You know what I mean? So, but without those specific things, I actually feel it come from the, oh, the word is Hellenistic. The Hellenistic belief systems more so mm -hmm. um, than actually the biblical ones, because a lot of Jewish people definitely don't believe in hell. They're like, no, hell doesn't exist. Like Tartarus. Uh, uh, you know Tartarus. What I mean? That's what, that, that's where it comes to, um, where the, uh, where, where, um, where the Titans dwell. Right is where where the Titans got banished. It, it's just just hellfire and brimstone. All the all the, they just in constant perpetual uh, uh, torment. So that that's that did, again like it's it's conflating it's conflating the two uh, the two cultures the two uh, identities and you created an entirely new thing. So. Yeah, and it was such a mm -hmm. weapon, right? Because the mm -hmm. concept of hell, like that, that they made up, isn't based off of what it says. And there's there's things like gnashing of teeth and stuff, but then you could argue what that means because there's not anything that clearly points to what they interpreted to, right? At all, like not even close. And and when it, when it, the thing is like 
they use that shit literally, like you said, as a weapon to then like, you know, it's not just going to heaven. It's like, oh, if you don't want to suffer for eternity, you're going to do what we mm-hmm. say. You know what I mean? And that's right. Yo, like, damn, I'm already suffering. I don't want to go through this another like right. millennia. You know what I mean? Like another billion years, you know, can't perceive what a billion is. Like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah that's I, I want to. Okay. Oh, Oh no, no! I, I was just saying, just, just that you, when, when you think about it, like that, that's why I, I try to put myself in the shoes of like of somebody that was around during that time, because it's real easy for me to say, well, you know, y'all <laughs> like get it together, man. But <laughs> you know, but like really put yourself in the shoes of the average person during that time, mm-hmm. right? They can't. Most folk can't even perceive tomorrow, man. <laughs> like, like I don't know. Like, I could, I could catch the plague tomorrow. You know, the Huns could be coming tomorrow. I don't know what's. I don't know. So you telling me I'm going to burn in hell for 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 forever? I don't, forever ever? I can't even. I can't even process that. So, all right, whatever you tell me, all right, that whatever you tell me that to do to avoid that, then I'm gonna do it. So when you look at it like that, it's like, all right, I, I can see how and I can see why. And even if they did, like Vilness was saying, even if they did have access to the information, you know, I'd rather err on the side of caution. If that be the case, then. I mean, it's, it's, it's not much different today, really, in the sense that we still are heavily indoctrinated. We still believe, you know, a lot of things just based on what we've heard our whole entire lives. And we still do a lot of things out of fear that's in that's like kind of instilled in us by the ruling class and that's i wanted to go back to the quotation on fireback that you that you quoted because that's really fascinating me because like i knew that marx and Engels read fireback because like that you know marx's thesis on fireback is one of the mm-hmm. foundational works but i i think that maybe they read that's something that they really picked up on because one of marx's big uh positions was on morality and ethics And, you know, Marx and Engels said that morality and ethics themselves have a class character and that the ruling class of any given era kind of like shapes the the, the morals and the ethics and the working class or the, you know, the lower classes might have sort of like their own takes on morality and ethics, but they're not allowed to challenge the status Mm -hmm. quo. And that sounds like it came directly from Feuerbach's quote about society creating God's image. So I think there's really a class character to this and you see it where. Uh, I, you know, there's, there's certainly a dialectical relationship between moral and ethics and religion in every society. And um, it seems like this tool of using religion to enforce the ruling class's agenda. And, and, and that goes to where you were talking about how, you know, it was like the Catholic church in the feudalist era and then the Protestant church now under the capitalist colonialist slavery era. Um, I just think this is really like uh, a key connection between the class politics of Marx and Engels and what you're talking about here with the, with the role of religion in reinforcing the ruling class of any given stage of development of humanity. So I, I think that's a uh, really key and probably a good reason why communists and anarchists and that sort of thing should be studying religion and, and mm-hmm. the history of religion, especially. Oh yeah. Like, I mean, if, if you just look at just about, if you just name any civilization off the top of your head, you will see that the priest, the, the, the shaman, whoever is the spiritualist, uh, or the spiritual advisors of that civilization, if they're not at the top, they're close to the top as far as the social hierarchy goes. You know, and more often times than not, it goes, you know, nobility, the priest, the warriors, and then the rest of us, right? So, and there, there's a reason behind that because at the end of the day, the nobility can go back to the can go back to the priest and say listen we gotta get these folk in check you know go tell them that god told you x right and that get and that get folk in line real quick so yeah there there is definitely a class uh, um a class element to it it just Shit. uh religion in general right right you, you see what i'm saying I'm about to be mm-hmm. like sometimes the priest at the top of the food chain because sometimes well, uh, they can yeah. lose, you can lose your head for cancer uh, 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 for a long time. You can lose your he- head for going against the pope even as a king, like mm-hmm. lose your full head. Like bye. Another like, interesting thing is that there are some indigenous religions that are less kind of I guess authoritarian or less uh, y- y- and these tend to be religions where like you know the the grandmother is like the spiritual center of the family or um you know that sort of thing and then those are the indigenous you know religions and cultures that tend to get stamped out the fastest by colonialism 
you know, mm -hmm. like, cause that kind of thing might actually empower people to have, you know, kind of flatter hierarchies in mind as they, as they look at society. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's just really, yeah. And, and, and the other thing too, like on, on, in that same vein is the way that Christianity has been able to kind of, um, recuperate a lot of like folk religions and, and more indigenous religions in Europe. So like we all talk about like the Yule logs and the Christmas trees and all these things and how they mm -hmm. come from like more pagan religions, but Christianity has been able to kind of like take those elements, even like holidays, like Christmas and that sort of thing are obviously like uh, recuperations and, and, and basically theft of like indigenous cultures. And they've done it around the world. Um, so I, I'm curious, like, how, so one thing I'm curious about a uh, little bill is like um, how you practice your faith uh, you know, you know, how do you try to like dissect it from this kind of um, imperialist characteristic, and how do you try to go back to, I guess, what you'd see as more of the roots of of, uh, of the of the faith? Or, I mean, like, yeah, what are your thoughts on that? Like, how do you practice your faith without all this crap? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I it, it's as simple as this: is I just keep it as simple as possible, right? Mm -hmm. I, I I was telling somebody today if if uh. If Jesus ain't say it, I ain't got nothing. That that's that that's what I base it on. Is if it is is what does it go back to the God? Because at the end of the day, if that's supposed to be you know the chief figure in in our faith, you feel me? I really couldn't care less what a pope got to say. I couldn't care less what a bishop got to say. If it doesn't if it doesn't line up with that, and that I think you know that's how, and I, I tell people that, because people ask me this question all the time, you know, how, you know, how can you be a Christian and be radical at the same time? I'm like, read the gospels, man. Like, like that, that's just that, like that, that, that was basically the entire ministry. Like I said, he, he came out the gate saying, I've come to preach good news to the poor. Every time he had an opportunity, he would, you know, what was he saying? Woe to you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, right? right? That mm -hmm. y'all, you full of extortion and access, you forgotten uh, justice and mercy and all of the other weightier matters of the law. He said to love your neighbor the way that you love yourself, right? So at the end of the day, my thing is, is like this, is whatever your doctrine is, if, if you got to try and explain away your doctrine when it comes to that, when it comes to what the gospel say is what the words of jesus then that ain't christianity <laughs> or at least christianity as it was meant and as it was practiced in the early church right as it was practiced pre-constantine that ain't it whatever you got is some conflation later on down the line i don't mean to you know uh uh, uh, uh to dismiss or to disrespect your beliefs but you shouldn't have to say, okay, Jesus said, but now you got a problem, right? So that and that that's the whole thing, you know, where um with the whole uh evangelical thing, man, is that it is so antithetical to the point that you ask yourself, do y'all even read the because because nothing nothing that you're saying nothing that you're practicing reflects what isn't what are in these gospels right or what are in y'all what y'all do is y'all isolate the passages that seem that appear to talk about stuff and either things that you don't like right because you always want to isolate, and I'm I'm not going to get into it for the for the sake of time, but um, isolate certain passages, right? That talk about certain quote unquote sins, right? But you completely dismiss the context of it. You don't even know what it says in the original, uh, in in the original text in which it was written. Because when you read it there, then it means something completely different. But you're not taking that into consideration because I have an interpretation that reinforces my bias, that reinforces my bigotry. So going back to the every society creates God. So you're not worshiping God. Right. You are worshiping yourself using God as a proxy. Right. Back. So 
that so that's all that that is so that so that's what i do is i i just keep it as simple as possible is if it's if it's not in the gospel then i don't i don't want to hear it i don't jive with it and i try to follow that um the, the same vein the same it's hard for me to understand how somebody can read that and not come away with it with the same message that people like, you know, Ida B. Wells came with it, you know, Fannie Lou Hamer, you know, the, the abolitionists, the early Methodists, you know, all of those for, you know, the Quakers, right? Martin Luther King, right? It's hard for me to read that and not, and not draw the same conclusion that all of them did. And that this is a radical, if, if you, if, if you want to understand christianity as a separate and complete belief system away from judaism i don't understand how you do not read these gospels and not take away from it that this is a radical declaration right this is saying establishing god's kingdom on earth creating a new social order right one that is equitable for folk right one that it won and with because at the end of the day if you love your neighbor the way that you love yourself right what you going to do you're going to create a society where everybody gets treated right right everybody gets treated fairly right so i don't understand how you can read it and not come away with the conclusion that those folks came away with so yeah that's that that's how i approach it as somebody who used to be very into like, I don't know, I won't say the liberation for, uh, theology because that wasn't really where I was coming from because uh, it wasn't like from their lens, it was just from my lens, right? But from someone who did believe in at one point specifically. Now, I don't completely reject it either, to be clear, but I don't completely believe it, if that makes any sense. So, um, but when, when we see it, it's like, how can you look at the words of this person you call Jesus, Yeshua, right? Like, uh, well, I always just call, I, I like, really big on the name but like yeshua right how can you look at his work right and f be pro-capitalist how can you be pro-imperialist pro-state it didn't make any sense because he literally got killed for not right. bowing to the empire they I mean, the read between the, the fucking lines at least right, <laughs> right. He, he was literally at that that at, at the end of the day jesus was crucified because he spoke against the ruling class of his society Matter of fact, that's why in the beginning he was telling me, don't don't tell nobody about me. Don't don't tell them what I'm doing because my work is not done yet. But once he got to the point of saying, all right, I'm good. That's that's when he started poking his chest out and saying, all right, I'm here. Right. You feel me? Do what y'all do what y'all going to do. I've already the folk that, you know, the revolution is already taking place. They all, they've already seen it. They've already seen the fruit, right? So you, so, so you feel me? It's, it's a, it's a done deal at this point. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a. It, I, I, I it, it makes no sense. <laughs> you, you, you Let's, can't, you, you cannot, you cannot be a Christian in the original, the way that the Bible, you feel me uh relays what being a christian because all a christian literally means is follower of christ that's literally what that word means you cannot be a follower of christ and come away with it and and, and come away from it with oh yeah capitalism a-okay it don't make any sense yeah, <laughs> it, it, yeah. Yeah, man. I also it's really interesting too because the way like the interpretation of the follower of of Yeshua, right? The interpretation of that um, mm -hmm. uh, specifically is really wild right now. Like in capitalism, right? As capitalism is twist that for itself. Not only do we got a prosperity gospel, we go all into that, but like, mm -hmm. but specifically how you can do anything anything, act any way your whole life, and as long as you say in the name of Jesus. You good? Mm -hmm. Nah, that's not what that meant, yep. bro. That's not what that mm -hmm. meant at all. And so the fact if you're if you're sitting there chasing wealth, if you're sitting there uh, not looking out for your neighbor, your people, you're sitting there trying to mm -hmm. crush people around you, and you're not standing up to the leaders of your church, to the mm -hmm. prosperity gospel, who literally you sh the person Yeshua would have gone and flipped over all their tables and right. shit and beefing. Like if you're mm -hmm. not standing up to to like the at least at least to the amount of not acknowledging them as authority, the government, then you ain't even. 
You ain't even following you, you ain't even the example. So like, you ain't it. like, but capitalism was able to co-op that to be like, no, just you can do whatever as long you can, mm-hmm. as long as you make money, you can do whatever, and you just. Right. At the end of your life, just say, oh, Jesus, I'm sorry for all the things I did. I, you can go commit genocide. You can do all mm-hmm. these things in the name of the U.S. government. And then at the end of the day, we can go and like, Jesus, forgive me, and it's all good. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't but, think that's yeah, how that but works. Ain't that, but, ain't that like, but ain't that like capitalism to co-op something, right? Hell yeah. The, the co-op and commodify something. Con- perpetually. We used to do culture, art, <laughs> race, <laughs> the co-op and commodify it. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a tale as old as as old as liberalism, so I mean, it, yeah. it, it's it's nothing new under the sun. So I, I mean, that's that that's just the way that that goes, man. Well, that's like yeah, it, 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 to go again, go back to Marx, Engels, and Feuerbach, and the way that the ruling class will always kind of co-opt and recuperate. Uh, I mean, they did the same thing to Martin Luther King Jr. What they did to mm-hmm. Yeshua Jesus. I mean, we have this kind of kind of um, sanitized, liberalized version of Martin Luther King Jr. That actually, like corporations like McDonald's, have essentially like created from whole cloth because Martin Luther King Jr. himself was so radical, you know, and, and challenged the status quo and the class structure so much, they can't have that. So they have to kind of reshape it in a way that suits and supports and protects the ruling class from these kinds of radical ideas. They either have to recuperate or stamp it out. So that's right. what we're seeing, I guess. And they had to turn, turn uh, moderate to progressive too. That's, that's another thing they had to do, changing that. <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly. Yeah, these people think that you change the names of things and it changes the essence. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I mean, but you, you got to give it to them. It works to an extent. It 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 does work for some folks. Some folks yeah. say, "Oh, oh, I'm I'm progressive now because you know because <laughs> I, <laughs> I put Black Lives Matters in my Twitter bio. Well, you know, Twitter. That, that, makes me, <laughs> that that makes me progressive, right? So I, I, you got you got to give them that. Is it, it, is they got the psychology part down? Hundred percent, yeah, yeah. That's oh, their. Right. That's that's what keeps them in power. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, there's mm-hmm. a lot more of us than there are of them. <laughs> right. Look, look, I, and, and I'm not. I just gotta say, just because you said that, uh, I'm not for like forcing people to interracially date, and I'm not for like like pushing it as a, a philosophy, right? But like, I just gotta say, on these dating apps, how come I've seen people be like black lives matter and later on like i'm just uh, you know i just have a preference to only date white people you know what I mean? <laughs> like the same wow. fucking shit. i'm just saying i just i'm never gonna lose that i should i should screenshot that and use that youtube video <laughs> find that profile that shit was hilarious I'm like what okay that's fine <laughs> there's plenty of like the black lives matter oh there, there's one person on twitter who was like a black person was like rude to them and so they took black lives matter out of their profile <laughs> it's <just> like <laughs> Bro, it's, it's like, like <laughs> it's it's very commoditized though, like like Lil Bill was saying, right. like it's super commoditized. Like, and I think there's like really a continuity between religious and secular in that sense. Like they're doing the same things with secular things like Martin Luther King and Black Lives Matter that they're doing with mm-hmm. religious subjects, because it's all serving essentially the status quo of the ruling class, and they, and that's what it's been through the centuries. Right. It's just really fascinating to kind of recontextualize it from a religious standpoint for me because I've studied the class struggle a lot. I haven't really studied the religious aspect of it, but you're really pointing out to me that there's so much overlap and that they're really kind of the same phenomenon, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay, I just got one more question about the like the BLM thing, right? So, how many times have y'all like little Bill? How many times have you? Because I, I can't even count anymore. Got an arguments for people are saying racist shit that have BLM in the profile. I. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> have, you, have you lost count too? Because <laughs> I lost count a long time ago. I, I, I lost. I, and the funny thing is, is that I, I be like, I'm not trying to argue with. I'm, I, I just be pointing stuff out. But then folk get mad, like when, like, I, I don't know. It, it, it just be like, just be like normal stuff. Like you, I. I don't know. I I I I, I get. I guess it's just, whatever make folk sleep easier at night. You know, if you if you want to put it, go ahead. Whatever. If you want to put a black light, if you want to put a Ukrainian flag in your thing, I don't, I, I don't care. Whatever floats your boat. Whatever. I you ain't got no Puerto Rico flag. You ain't got no uh Palestinian, Palestinian flag. But okay, go right. ahead. Put Ukraine in there because you see it on the news every day. But whatever. Uh, so I'm. That, that that's the thing with people, man. Is that is it, it, that we and that that's a another product of 
uh, of capitalism i feel like is that it, it, it just it it lulls us into this 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 state of of false consciousness that mm-hmm. just says all right you do the the absolute bare minimum and you're actually doing something because we're so accustomed to sacrificing you feel me freedoms for the sake of convenience right like 20 years ago you wouldn't fathom you feel me people uh you know uh google being able to sell your data off to you know insert corporation here people would have had a fitment like i remember you know when folk was afraid to shop online because they said i don't want nobody getting my information i don't want any but but now look we just just lining up oh yeah let me you know use this google pay i got all my cards on the google pay i just put it up to the vending machine and 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 we good you know what i'm saying so it's 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 just a project continuously just sacrificing freedom after freedom after freedom for the sake of just being just just making life a little bit more commodif- uh commodifiable if that if, yeah. if that's the word that's that's it- yeah so isn't that what they do to to christianity too though like because from what i understand judaism has a lot of elements of like struggle and questioning and Mm -hmm. doubt and that's all kind of like a big part of like the jewish faith that's all kind of been massaged out of christianity to its current form to where you know you just check the boxes it's like okay you go to church on sunday you drink the wine or whatever you got to do and Mm -hmm. you know just make it as simple as possible and then it becomes like an easier form of control and it makes people sleep better at night, like you said. But there's none of all that struggle has been kind of removed from it. Oh, yeah, that that's that's what the prosperity gospel is. That was that. I'm, I and I, I mean, we don't really got time to really get to really uh, delve into it uh, like this. But all right. So I, I, I'll, I'll tell you like this. Prosperity theology is a commodified it is the capitalist interpretation of pentecostalism effectively because Pente- pentecostalism is, is is a black religion right that would mm-hmm. that is it's a it's it's a black uh denomination uh, a black interpretation a bit very african matter of fact but if you know the history <laughs> of how we even got there is 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 very african i mean it does come from um the wesleyan holiness tradition but you know the azusa street revival where that where it came from the folks who facilitated that uh were very rooted in uh uh, uh, uh um African spiritualist tradition even you know uh kojic the biggest pentecostal denomination um in the u.s right now um it uh its founding bishop was very very and that you know people they tried to discredit him based on that based on how unapologetically black right his religiosity was so basically what you had happen was that uh was that um during around the 40s or 50s specifically kenneth hagan said all right i'm gonna take pentecostalism i'm gonna take capitalism i'm gonna put the two together and just say all right you feel me if you just pray as hard as you humanly can god's gonna make you rich that that's that's that 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 that's lit that's literally what it was and and it worked it worked because that's what folk wanted to hear. Folk didn't want to hear about the struggle. Folk didn't want to hear about, you know, uh, about um, about oppression. Folk didn't want to hear about, you know, having to endure. Because that's that's a heavy, heavy thing in both the Old and the New Testament is is enduring, right? Is enduring suffering, enduring persecution. You feel me? Is going through the hard times. You feel me for the sake of the bigger picture. But folk didn't want to hear that, and that's um. And it worked. So now, you know, you got these people over here telling me, okay, you got to suffer for the faith. But you got this man over here telling me, all right, uh, so a hundred dollar C in my ministry and you're going to have a Benz by next week. Which direction am I going to go? Right. (laughs) So so that and so that basically because honestly, here's the thing is that 
over like the past 20 years or so, I say that uh, prosperity theology is actually kind of um, kind of uh, been on a downswing. Right. Um, and really more so what it is now, if you look at like churches like um, like Hillsong or uh, 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 what's another one? Um, uh, uh, Bethel or or Steve Furtick or, or, or all of them. You'll notice they don't really do, you know, all of that, you know, uh, prosperity teaching. Like basically what they do is life coaching. Right. And so they've created a, 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 a form of Christianity that's conducive to folk who already got it and don't want to give it up. Right, mm. they, they've created a, 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 a an interpretation of Christianity that um that's basically it, it's 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 tailor made for upper middle class people, right? To say, all right, you got it. Now this is how you <clears throat> hold on to it, right? Um, live your best life now with the help of jesus right so that's basically what it is now is that christianity in a lot of ways is it is it's, it's it's designer now right it's mm. it's 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 not it's not even really and, and i'm just talking about and, and, and i'm talking about you know mainstream you know i you know because uh and this is something that i try to uh to to emphasize with folk is that you know uh Black church and mainstream Christian, they, they're almost at not almost, they're basically two different, two different uh religions, effectively. They're mm -hmm. pretty much two different things. Um, but as far as mainstream, which again was co-opted from us, but anyway, um it, it's it's less a religion than it is an aesthetic now, right? Yeah, like it that's that that's that's pretty much what it is, is that it's just taking, you know consumer culture and you know putting a jesus sticker on it effectively because that because because and because you listen to like like if you have the time like really like li listen to a listen to a steve furtick sermon or listen to a a, a michael ty or a, a what's another one um joel Osteen. you know just mm -hmm. just just listen to the to the 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 uh what's the word I'm looking for the content listen to the content of it 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 sounds like this is something that I would get at a Tony Robbins seminar right I, I I'm I'm serious I I kid yeah. if, if you sit and you look that's what it's it does not it has almost nothing to do right with you know telling folk you know it, 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 there's nothing really, you know, religious about it, aside from you just saying Jesus a few times throughout, right? But that's mm -hmm. effectively what. So, so we've gotten to the point now where Christianity in the mainstream, you know, and I think a big part of that is because of the ongoing secularization of Western society, because the center of the church is not in north america anymore it's in the it's in the it's in the global south now so now you have to find a way to appeal you feel me to folk in the west who otherwise wouldn't pay uh religion any mind who otherwise wouldn't pay christianity any mind so how do you do it basically you give them life coaching but you call it religion and mm -hmm. You make a bag so that's that so i i, I just wanted to that that was just a tangent that 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 just um popped into my head just now when we were talking about that yeah yeah no i i completely know what you're talking about though because i mean i i'm familiar with like joel steam for instance and it's really much more of a business model and there's a there's a right, huge church right. in um, south carolina and i think it's spreading all over the southeast now it's called i think seacoast but I remember when it was like it was like in a little strip mall, but they managed through like internet marketing essentially and live streaming and stuff like that. They've become this huge like corporate brand, and I think that's kind of like the direction a lot of churches are going. Um, mm -hmm. It's just fascinating. To see kind of, yeah, exactly. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Yeah, it's fascinating. Um, yeah, man. It's, uh, I want to be considerate of your time. Are you still are you still down or how how you feeling? Uh, let, I, 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 I'm gonna be honest. I'm I'm winding down. <laughs> I, 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 
yeah i but i, I wanted to make sure that i uh that, that i that i uh that that i gave you all my best though so i, I wasn't trying to hurry up and get off <laughs> oh, yeah, no, no. no we appreciate it I just want to be considerate because I know you uh, you're trying to get off like uh, it seems like we went over time a little bit, so I want to like give you a chance to, to plug and dip if you want to. So <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, but uh, thank, but thanks for having me on, y'all. It, it, it was really it was it was a pleasure. You know, I'm glad y'all y'all thought enough of me to even invite me on that. That that means a lot. Well, y'all should I, your I, shit's I, fire. I fuck with your shit. What you mean? <laughs> I love you. Your shit's fire. <laughs> uh, yeah, you should play your shit one more time before you get off too, though, so everybody who may have came in can like, you know. Oh yeah, no, no doubt. Um, uh, y'all see my name on the screen, Lil Bill. I'm on uh, I'm on YouTube. Uh, call myself Black John Stewart. So you know, if you remember the Daily Show from back when the Daily Show was still worth watching, you know that's what <laughs> we're trying to do. <laughs> that's what we're trying to do over there. We got a lot of eclectic stuff. The last video I just did actually was on liberation theology, but you know we talk a lot about a uh, uh, black issue. We talk a lot about. Matter of fact, on that I got a um, I got a video coming out uh, probably uh, sometime in in November um, on uh, how the, how the Dark Knight trilogy ruined almost ruined Batman. So y'all want to check that out. Um, and I, I, I don't want to give too much away, but basically uh, the point that I'm trying to get at with that is that um, uh, uh, the Nolan trilogy was garbage. <laughs> <laughs> I feel what hurt. The, I feel like the Fragile Dark Knight was I'm, the only Batman movie I've ever fucked with. It was, it was like a ninja. I, but I'm 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 gonna explain I'm, I'm gonna explain though because because people be like what be like listen that 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 was my movie when I was younger but the older I got and the more I started like 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 really like absorbing the themes like especially like the trilogy in totality I was like this man is a fascist <laughs> interesting I, was, I, was like, this, I said I I can't rock with this so yeah hmm. so yeah that's basically what and and um. And how the uh the new the, the Batman the new Batman basically yeah is it, it, it's that movie if if you ask me it's the best Batman movie since uh since uh since Tim Burton since eighty nine it was it so. was interesting at least it was like a new thing um that, I'm definitely gonna look out for that yeah I haven't even thought about those Christopher Christopher Nolan movies in quite a while um but yeah we appreciate we really do appreciate you coming on we hope you can come back sometime because I think there's a lot more we could talk about uh. So this has really been fantastic. Oh yeah, most definitely. I'll I'll just make sure next time I don't wake up at four thirty in the morning <laughs> before time. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so I can yeah, go the whole two hours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Get some sleep, fam. Have a, uh thanks for rocking with us. Good night, man. All right, no doubt. Y'all have a good night. Peace, peace. All right, good night. All right. That was awesome. Well, that was, uh, we did get a donation real quick. I'm so sorry. I mean, um, we knew that little bill had a limited amount of time and I just didn't want to interrupt the great conversation, but I mean, does have a really interesting, um, point. And I think, uh, big villainous, you could probably respond to this a lot better than I could. Um, cause I don't really know much about this stuff, but I me said, um, I read interpretations saying that turn the other tree, turn the other cheek, go the extra mile, and other nonviolent advice, I guess from the Bible, were actually ways to use laws and social conventions to get the other person in trouble. For instance, it would be illegal for soldiers to make you go too far, et cetera. Do you, do you know anything about that or um, that interpretation? Well, like, not not so much about, like, the, uh, like, the, the, I mean, social conventions, yeah, but not, not so much the, like, soldiers only make you go so far or something, but, uh, I know one of the things that I always read into it when I was talking about like uh, turn other cheek type stuff was getting smacked was uh, an insult. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It wasn't a. It wasn't a. I mean, of course, it was an attack, but it wasn't an attack. You see what I'm saying? Like uh, the same person also said though, like the same person, aka Jesus, aka Yeshua. Uh, the same person also said, if you don't have a sword, go get it. I know Christians like to say the sword was the Bible. There was no Bible, so. Oh, true. The Bible. I never thought about that. There was no. I never Bible. thought about that because it wasn't written down at that point, right? <laughs> it didn't exist. He meant a sword. Fascinating. Or if you live now, he probably say, "Go get a fucking strap." I'm just being real, <laughs> man. Like I'm just saying. 
Like, so I, the turn I of the cheek is, that, yeah. I feel like it's taken really out of context because it did. He, and I know they read, they revise it to make it look, you know what I mean? Like, literally, he told all his followers, I'm about to die. Go, y'all, don't don't interfere, but go get get your swords. Be ready. You know what I mean? You know, what's up? like, so like, th- those things aren't like, aren't talked about in the way they're supposed to because everybody's the, the Christian reinterpretation a lot of times is go get a Bible. Again, Bibles didn't exist yet. So, that's interesting. Did you ever notice that when they talk to when, when you know when in this Christian context, when they talk to like poor people in the context of like existing in civil society, it's always like be meek, turn the other cheek, don't fight back. But whenever you're talking about the empire, it's like onward Christian soldiers, like in the name of God, go conquer, you know, go on the crusade. You know, it's like there's two they, they'll yeah. shift the the fucking um you know, they, lane, depending on what they're talking about. They literally go out and tell you that you should uh, follow the government because it says to give uh, Caesar unto what Caesar's, which literally was just like this nigga this shit, got his nigga's face on it. Fuck it. We don't need his money. That right. wasn't it wasn't yeah. like but money didn't control the world the way it controls the world now. You could have yeah. land and uh, and uh, not really need a goal. So when they come for taxes, give them their fucking goal. Well, fuck them. Because you're still going to plant your food. You're still going to have your house. You're still going to fucking uh, have the animals you have. You know what I mean? All those things, different contexts. But they use that completely out of context, both scripturally and historically, to justify, like, obedience to the empire. And there are multiple things, they times they do that. You know what I mean? So it's just like a... Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I mean, I just like I said, going back to the slap thing. Slapping was an insult. It wasn't considered the same thing as like punching you or, you know, it wasn't considered the same right. thing. Um, now I wouldn't have got along in that society very much because I'd try to deck your ass. <laughs> but you know, what I mean? uh, but you know, uh, hey, I mean, it's still today. It's still kind of an insult. I, I mean, more than an assault, right? Like to be a buck about it. Like it is assault. It is violence. So like, let's not be slapping someone's violent and stop playing. Like when we act like it isn't. It is. Hundred percent, but like it's like the, it's like a really low level violence is more about insult. You're not gonna get fucking seriously hurt by getting slapped. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, you could, but it's not it's really. Have you seen the Russian one. slap contests? Though? Yeah, yeah. They, I, I mean, one yeah, of those guys could probably take me out. <laughs> I, I mean, the, you could, but that's not like a normal slap. A slap usually, right? Like, I know, I know. Like I'm you just, know, be, but you know, I, I trust me. I've done one of those. Wow, someone. Okay, I'm gonna tell y'all a story real quick. <laughs> So when I was in foster care, right, and it just goes kind of funny. Uh, there was this kid that was in there with us, and then he tried to watch some fucking heavy metal that had like Nazi flags on it and shit. And we're like, "Nope, we're not doing this. Change the channel on them, right?" And this, okay, this is a foster home full of black people. Everybody else is black besides this one white kid watching this rock and roll. So he came up and he was like, said said nigger at one point. I was like, "Bro, don't say it again." He's like, "Nigger, nigger, nigger, nigger." nigger. I literally slapped him like I gave him one of those those contest slaps, right? Because like literally his whole face blistered up. Nick really called the cops on me, um, but the cops didn't want to arrest arrest us. Like, oh, but you pushed him, okay? Well, that the, you assaulted each other, so we can arrest both of you or none of you. But I was like, oh my god, this worked out in my favor. I thought I was going to jail. Oh, yeah, I hit a white kid. You really like won the lottery that day. That could have that could have been a life changing. We're just uh, foster kids. They didn't give a fuck. They didn't want to do the paperwork. Let's be real. It wasn't because see, see. like you know we're foster kids. They, didn't, they don't give a shit about any of us. That's really what it came down to. They're like it. I'm I not doing paperwork. Because, you know, but also he didn't want to be able to do a new paperwork because the kid called, let's say, nigger a whole bunch of times and got slapped and they didn't want to do it. Right. Now it's home with the paperwork for, he probably just like, I don't know. Eh. Well, and if, it's, like, if it isn't done. the consequences like, of even, your own he, actions. Even, even if he is, even the cop wasn't, even the cop, like the cop was definitely racist, but even the cop was outwardly racist, right? He probably was like, well, I'm not going to help you just because you're stupid. You're in a house full of black people. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? I think there was like kind of like that type of shit, like. But I no, see. but like his whole face blistered up and everything. Everybody called it, called it like a shotgun slap because I slapped him so hard. But but that you know that's not usually how you slap somebody. <laughs> like that's not usually how that right. That, be. that was like a you're gonna learn your fucking lesson right now. <laughs> slap. You know? There are there are quality differences between slaps. Um, Swamp Goth uh, asked if we've heard of who is Damon. I know da- Damon. I've had Damon on the show before a long time ago. We should probably have Damon on again actually because I bet. That'd be a great conversation, and we should probably introduce Bill and Damon together because they're both kind of like left uh, Christian. They both have like very similar wheelhouses. So, um, do you know Damon Garcia? Big no, I'm ne- I've never heard of him. Oh, oh, we gotta have 
Damon on the show. Damon's very awesome. Has a book called um, The God Who Riots and uh, talks a lot about like the radical nature of... Um, I'm curious if... Uh, I'm sure Damon knows everything y'all were talking about, um, <laughs> unlike me. Uh, Void, thank you so much for being here. Uh, get some rest. Uh, we are going to keep going. I, I put up Brett's um, comment earlier. This was a great dialectic. It's not over yet. We have another, we're going for another 30 minutes, so stick with us. Uh, we got a lot more uh, content <laughs> ahead um, and a lot more to talk about. If you, if you have a couple of bucks and you want to donate, uh, please do. You can, you can super chat, but um, stream, elements is, stream elements is always better because it's a much lower fee and that goes directly to Big Villainous. Um, we're, yeah, we got about 30 minutes left. If you have any questions or comments or anything you want to talk about, we had so many good comments during the interview. I really wanted to uh, have more audience engagement, but again, we had Lil Bill for a limited amount of time and we wanted to, I didn't want to roll, you know, stop the rolling thunder. So um, that's, that's, I, I apologize to everybody who had great comments. Um, let's see if we have any that uh, we could spin through real quick. Oh, do you happen to know this? Like, um, I was curious myself, cause I know that I remember learning about this in high school. Like what are some of the ways in which the King James Bible, or is this something we have to have Lil Bill back on to talk about? Like the, the King James Bible, I know that it, so, just real quick, because we've been talking about religion for a long time. We probably want to move into another topic, but this was something that I thought was interesting. Um, like when I was a kid, we would read the King James Bible in church. And I knew from my history classes that like the King James had this Bible translated because he wanted to like divorce his wife, you know, while he was in the process of beheading and divorcing all these women. Um and uh, that he had this translation done basically as a political expedient. And so I would be like, how do we know that this translation is good? And then the people at the church would be like, oh, it was divinely inspired. And you can't question it because it was like Jesus told them all, I guess, in some kind of prayer trance, exactly what to write down in the King James Bible. And it never really sat right with me. But like, yeah, I mean, there are things in the King James Bible that like specifically reinforce the mandate of like King James, right? I mean, do you know any specific things off the top of your head or? I mean, I don't, I think it'd be more to doctrine than the actual scripture probably. Um, I'm not as familiar with that because here's the thing, there are a few things that are actively changed, but like you can uh -huh. get a Tunak, you know what I mean? So you can get the whole uh -huh. Old Testament like in a parrot and it's, it's there are points where it's different, but it's not that different, you know what I mean? Um, I think it'd be more like probably he'd write it I mean, I think it more be like a political sway thing, if I had to guess, right? Like, he'd give more sway in the church, so more of his dictates mm -hmm. would be seen as, like, you know, like going hand-in-hand -hand with the Pope, right? Oh, yeah. Or whatever. Is what I have he became guess. the but head I, of the I, church, I, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. But I would think that'd be probably more, uh, that'd be better probably with a little bill than, than me, because I think there's certain components I'm really familiar with, yeah. that I'm not, because I'm, like, yeah, you know, yeah. I didn't get all the way through Christian history books. I made it to, like, the thousand. <laughs> I just like remember covering it, like, for, like, an hour or so in um, AP European history in high school. So, but um, yeah, we'll have a little bit on to talk about that in the future. Yeah. And then do you know I get, any I get kind of resources? spotty after a thousand, about a thousand AD. I get kind of spotty because that's all I'm up to about there. Right. That's, well, that's, that's when it all gets at. way off the rails. Um, do you know anything about, uh, I, sh I really wanted to ask a little bit of this question, but like, do you have any reading suggestions or anything for folks who are interested in this one or more? Or is that another thing um, I have to get a little bit back then? I mean, uh, I definitely would look into like Christian history if you're really interested in like the history of the empire and it connects. Like, I mean, I, there's not like a name of a book, but there's like there's like whole things you can go and go through like the uh, church like libraries or just like probably some online you can find. I don't have any specific, but it was a uh, because what I had when in prison there was like um I don't even remember the name of the specific books, but there was like a whole history of the Christian church, and it would work from mm -hmm. like before Nicene Council to there and when all like they like people historians when they studied up and all that type of stuff. So it had like a had like a multiple books. You know what I mean? It wasn't like one book. It's like book after book after book and like that thick. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean I don't it's know. A lot, it's a lot I to chew on, definitely. I, I mean and I was in prison. I wasn't taking notes. You know what I mean? I wasn't like, oh I'm gonna need to <laughs> say this on YouTube and like nah, I just was I was in the chat I was in Chapel Library and like I'm bored. I'm gonna read some fucking like understand like if I'm gonna you. be here uh, reading the Bible, I might as well understand the history of, the, of everything. So I learned that, and then some of that stuff was uh, you know, taught down, then looked up, or other people had books that they showed me. And I mean, like a lot of uh, a lot of Muslims showed me some shit too. So there were books that they showed me, and I don't remember what those names are. So it was like a lot of things because it was not they're not one of those. 
they, like I learned a lot from them, but they weren't like a life changing thing. It's not like when I read like read uh, Wretched to Earth, and I'm like, oh shit, like you know, what I mean? it wasn't like I read Revolutionary Suicide. I was like, oh shit, it wasn't the same like you know level to me. So uh, yeah, I don't remember mm. the names of them. <laughs> you know, what I mean, there's a lot of books I remember names of. So I'm sorry, y'all. Um, That's all right. right. We'll have we'll have Bill but, back but on, and we'll have if you uh, look up, on and talk. But I'm sure if you Go just Google Christian history, like uh, uh, like exhausted Christian history, yeah, something like that, like exhausted Christian history. But I'm sure if you Google it, it you will find it. It's not going to be that. It's like because it's like official from like the like the what's it called? They're like Christian historians people. So it's like it's yeah. official shit. So it's like uh, I don't know. It's just like most people didn't read that shit. I just was reading because I was <laughs> Jeff Library bored and I couldn't afford books like that. So if someone couldn't like give me a good book, then when I ran out of good books to read, then I would go just drive into Christian history and like learn all that shit. Um, <laughs> I, I, like I said, there's a lot of stuff out there and I don't, I don't have any one recommendation, but I think that you can definitely Google it. Um, and there's a lot yeah. of, t- there's, well, you can no, also go it, watch Little Bill's no. videos. Oh, Little Bill talks about this stuff a lot. So you can watch those and check, also, his, check his sources. Definitely watch little bills of videos. I mean, I don't know how much of it's like. It's not a lot of Christian stuff. It's a lot of black shit. So, like, you, know, you might, okay. but you should still watch it though. You should go watch those. <laughs> um, right. But uh, uh, like, <clears throat> what I also say is, if you're if you're if you're someone who say believer, right, don't read the Bible without a concordance, like an exhaustive concordance. Strong's exhaustive concordance is one I used to use when I was like, don't read without it, because <clears throat> you got to understand. So concordance tells you exactly what every word actually meant per like uh, chapter and verse and stuff. And, okay. you know, they'll use the same <clears throat> words multiple for multiple different things. And they mean different shit. So when you when you're sitting there like you're um, reading it, you know, and you're not reading without concordance, you don't actually understand what you're reading. Because a lot of the like English right. does not do it justice. And there's stuff's way more like the, the Arabic and the Aramaic and stuff like that is way more nuanced even the greek translations right so um like a strongest concordance is good if you're a believer and you want to read it like to understand what you're reading so you don't walk away with like things um that have been written a certain way for to be advantageous to certain people because you actually understand what you are actually like what what those words meant when they were written down not what they mean after retranslation if that makes sense because they'll tell you what the word is too so you can if you want to try to teach yourself how to pronounce it you can i, don't, I didn't do all that it's a, little, it's a little much for me but it has a pronunciation of everything from the original words and that's why a strong accordance is i think mandatory for anybody who wants to believe uh in christianity i think it's mandatory i don't think you can read the bible without it and understand what you're reading because some words just yeah. don't make sense like for example can i use y'all like i might go super deep but I'll, if i can ed- drop some knowledge on y'all right so like devil <laughs> devil right when they when everybody says the devil or a devil right devil means accuser it's a word right uh. satan means adversary but you don't know these things if you're just taking it for you're picturing some dude with fucking horns and a fucking tail and a pitchfork right so like you don't understand what's actually being said because not all the time they're talking about anything divine a lot of times they're talking about like you know they could be talking about the empire fucking satan you know what i mean you know what I mean? Like, 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 this is one thing. Yeah, some people are probably going to unsubscribe for this, but uh, this is one thing, right? Like, uh, like I used to love the phrase white devils because, like, you know, they motherfuckers could be snitching on us. <laughs> I can tell it. Like, they did this, this, and this. You're devil, you're, accusing, you're out here accusing us of shit and shit, and you're going to mouth shut, bro. Stop going to the state. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, they'll, they'll call the police and everybody fuck. You know I mean? And if you if you get offended by that, go watch my video on the C word, which I can't say because Twitch is a white supremacist platform, but you can find it over at youtube.com slash noncompete. And we talk all about how there's no such thing as a slur for a white person. <laughs> and if you're offended by that, you need to understand what whiteness is. Um, <laughs> yeah. Also, it's also why I know what uh, hell is Sheol and what Sheol meant. Sheol meant the grave. Like, so when you die, everybody, mm-hmm. all the prophets in the scriptures went to Sheol, everybody, because it means the grave. We all die hmm. is what it's saying and so when people yeah people don't understand what it means and they just read hell and they're picturing like fiery brimstone shit which is like we talked about is a way that they were able to pressure people into committing genocide like because of fear yeah. of hell oh uh, yeah so yeah 100 i i wasn't familiar with the fact by the way chenny says that uh sorry i'm sure i mispronounced that chenny um said uh Angles wrote a book on the early history of christianity i did not know that i'll have to check that out and also swamp goth suggested uh Religion for Breakfast, which is a channel I have watched a lot. It's um, got a lot of really good information. I watch stuff on the Gnostics. I've watched stuff on Islam. If you 
it, you know, there's a lot of uh, faiths out there that we don't learn a lot about, uh, you know, in our standard kind of, at least in the USA, in our standard education um, and our day-to-day lives, if, you don't, if you're not, you know, near those communities. Like I, was, I grew up in Charleston, South Carolina. Basically, people were Christian or not. Like there wasn't a lot of diversity of religion where I was growing up. So, um, so yeah, there's some good good research out there. Go it reminds me of a conversation we we're having on the phone, right? Like I was talking about like the atheist Christian bullshit, right? Like these two mm-hmm. like white belief systems, just yeah. like it's me, no, it's me, it's me, it's me. Like, yo, what if you're both fucking just wrong? Fuck, fuck you. Like, other <laughs> things you can believe, you know what I mean? Right, like, there's right. so many other shit that I'll could be out. the reality than Christianity versus atheism, right? What if it's neither one it's of almost those? Almost like a Christian <laughs> realism kind of thing, you know? It's like it's it's, it's like the it's like the Democrat Republican. It's like no Democrat, Republican, Democrat, Republican. It's like well, <laughs> maybe there's more to it than that. Um, yeah, there's, you know, because <laughs> you know, we're not talking. You know, nobody's talking about voodoo. Nobody's talking about voodoo. Nobody's talking about all the African religions. Nobody's talking about uh, like I mean, you're not even talking about the big ones like Buddhism and Hinduism and shit. Like you're not considering any of the other belief systems. It's like it's you're Christian or atheist, and it's like yo, and it's all also why I get frustrated with atheists because I'm even though I'm not uh, believing about them, I'm not atheist still. I'm 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 pantheist. I mean, I think I believe in a god is sentient and is literally the universe, and it, I yeah. yes, I believe it's sentient. So, um, yeah, and so like I wouldn't be an atheist. I also I'm not a Christian, not not no more at least. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Well, we, we should have this conversation with Luna also sometime because Luna can talk about how in Asia and specifically in Vietnam, there are basically secular, I don't know what you would call it. It's not really religion per se, but it's not really like just a philosophy. It's like a secular faith kind of thing. So for instance, like with like their ancestor worship, which is a really bad translation of what that actually is. It's really just kind of like respect for elders and for the people that went before you. So like that's something that... um a lot of fucking foreign journalists get totally wrong is um, they say that like, oh, people in Vietnam are so brainwashed that they worship Ho Chi Minh. And it's like, that's actually like their, their, their ancestor worship is not a religious act at all. They're like burning incense and like putting up altars and stuff as just kind of like a way of culturally remembering people. And some people do, there are some things where like, you know, they have a spiritual aspect to it, but uh, most people in Vietnam are not religious and don't consider themselves religious, but they still have these, kind of cultural practices. So anyway, yeah, there's like all these different ways of existing in all these different cultures, but we just have, you know, in the West, we just have atheism and Christianity. And it's like the battle between the two and there's no room for talking about anything else. I completely agree with you on that. Uh, we got an anonymous donation for $15. Thank you so much for that. That was a uh, very kind of you. Your oh, elements. Thanks to whoever you are. Um, so let's see. Uh, we got about 15 minutes left. Do you want to, I'm, I'm cool to keep talking religion or do you want to switch tracks or how do you feel? I mean, I think I think I think we would just rock with it. I think we uh, once we got to the hour and a half mark, uh, about hour and a half and a little bit, we'll just d- dip in. I was like, you know, we should probably just chop it up because I think yeah. videos would be too much at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, All right. Uh, I mean, um, it doesn't have yeah, to be so with the gym, but we can just chop it up. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, well, we got some. Let's see. Uh, let's let's get the chat involved a little more. Come on, chat. Let's engage. Let's intergage. Uh, if you have anything you want to talk about, anything at all, let us know. Um, Maybe like a secular culture derived from religion. I mean, Luna could dis- Luna could explain it all better than I could. But basically, there are people like, like for instance, Luna, okay, there's there's a there's a, there's so much diversity in Vietnam. That's one of the cool things about it, and that's really kind of quite different from where I grew up. There are people like Luna's mom who is Buddhist, but their Buddhism is very like grounded in reality, and it's not like her mom is like meditating all the time or trying to like become enlightened because she's she knows she's not at that level yet so she's just spending her life trying to like accumulate good karma and be like nice to people and stuff and like sending good karma to her ancestors and that sort of thing so like luna's mom is like this interesting uh grounded version of buddhism and then her dad is like pretty much completely atheist but has does a lot of the cultural practices of like burning incense for ancestors and you know, going to, um, you know, have, they have an altar in their house and, you know, being respectful of that and all that kind of thing. But her dad does it in a way that's like completely secular. And then Luna's kind of like a, I don't know, high, she, she's kind of like does a lot of the cultural stuff. She could explain herself better than I could, but there's just so much diversity. I mean, then there's Taoism in Vietnam. There's uh, the, the local like spirits and gods and that sort of thing. And then most people kind of like put their toes in all the waters and just kind of participate in all of it 
on a more or less cultural basis. And it's just really, it's really fascinating and it's kind of refreshing because it's so not the like Christian, um, you know, uh, what would you say? Like, 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 like standard of like what a religion is. It's a, it's, it's just very um, interesting. Luna's, oh, Luna said I did a great job explaining it. No way. Wow. I thought I was really muddling my way through this. <laughs> Taoism is sort of anarchist. I agree. Yeah. I mean, well, it also depends on what kind of, I, I've, I've studied Taoism a little bit. I'm not an expert at all, but there are different forms of Taoism. And I know that at like certain points in time, uh, Chinese um, monarchs have like, created authoritarian versions of Taoism. Um, but yeah, the original Taoist texts were very like anti-authoritarian and, and they were also like, you should reject power. Here's a, here's the fucked up thing. I'm not going to go too deep into this. I'll leave y'all like brain broken real quick. All uh -huh. right. Check this. The God of the Bible uh, is an anarchist. Dress that. The God of the Bible is like an anarchist. anarchist. Yeah, bro. If you, if you, That's a you go tough old, sell. If you go to the Old Testament, well, at least when it uh -huh. comes to human beings, because if you go to okay. the Old Testament, he had an argument originally about the judges and the kings, about how you don't need judges, you don't need kings. They're just going to make uh, concubines of your daughters and fucking soldiers of your fucking sons. You know what oh. I mean? That you only need you only need each other and me. So, uh, I see. you know, you, know, so, I mean, you can I say see. that okay. he's, he's not an anarchist because him, but like, I mean, among men, <laughs> at least among humans, well, I mean, you know. This is like a pipe dream. We'll probably never do it, but it would be kind of interesting one day to have a fucking like, like, I don't know, like communist church thing where like we read the Bible every week and we look at it from like an anarchist or communist, anarcho communist kind of perspective and just debate about it and shit. That could be interesting. But also... Yeah. It, I would suck at that because I don't know. I don't have any background knowledge of so. <laughs> I mean, I would just, I was in prison, so I read a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, no, it was really, it was really interesting because it like literally was an argument with the people of Israel. Like, no, we need a king. Everybody else has kings. We need a king because we'll be more like, woo. And it's like, no, you don't. Okay, fine. Fuck it. You guys want it? Here. Now you got it. This is what they're going to do to you. I told you don't, you don't want it, but you don't listen to me. You know what I mean, I so like, you. <laughs> so like, I was like, you know what I mean? You know, it's just a little funny thing. And now we can argue yeah. like clearly that like it's influenced by the times and the periods of each each era era that was going on. So like we can take that with a grain of salt, but there's moments. There's definitely moments. Um also there's <laughs> there's uh, one more biblical thing. I, I just feel like I really want to hit hit okay. I saw this comment. So I wanted to uh, be like I want to talk about the rapture real quick, like so. The only thing that was ever said about the rapture in the Bible, the, the coming back of Jesus and the way they described it, right? Like when we talk about like a, I mean, okay, let me come back to Jesus is different, but like rapture specifically, like the idea of the when Jesus comes, all the reds be raptured up. The only thing that it really said is two people will be standing in a field and a blink of an eye, one will be gone and one will be there. To me, that sounds like <clears throat> mass extinction, maybe not of the whole species, but about half of us. That's what that sounds like prophesying. Just saying. I've always read that and been like, huh. Does this sound like what we're doing to ourselves right the fuck now? <laughs> I'm just, I'm I just, I'm not, I'm not I'm just saying. I'm not saying that I like go oh, believe it or don't believe it. I'm just saying, like, you know, what if the what if the dude's dreams weren't all not whatever? Take their religion away from it. I'm like, bro, there's some there's some shit going on. I mean, I think we kind of kind of fucked ourselves. But uh, but no, no, for well, real. It's also like, one of those hindsight thing of, like, 2020 things. Well, no, no, no. Okay. I, mean, I, was, I was trolling a little bit, but like, well, for real, it's like I don't know how they get this idea. Like a lot of people get into Christianity because I'm like, yo, that sounds like a horrible thing happening. Not like some like, <laughs> oh, we're taking up. So like, literally, half <laughs> people are gonna die. Point. It sounds like saying that half the population of the world is gonna die. I, that's what it sounds like. It's saying not Jesus came and picked us all up in the clouds. I'm like, you guys, <laughs> it is, it is. Well, okay. the, remember the whole, the, remember that, um. um fucking left behind series remember that yeah. and they were like they were I watched like, that a like few times. fetishizing the um the horrible things in the bible that are going to happen to us it's very interesting but it's all i was going to say it's also like a hindsight 2020 thing like um because like looking at the way humanity has developed now it's kind of like it had to go this way and it's conceivable that somebody two thousand years ago might have seen the way things were there in their time and just through like you know facts and logic reasoned out like yeah it's this is probably gonna happen like we're probably gonna fuck like you know they were sitting there you know in the desert and looking at the ecological destruction of their time looking at the rise of like 
hierarchy and kings and slavery and shit in their time. And they were like, ah, we're probably going to end up fucking all of this up and killing ourselves eventually. And then, like, you know, wrote that down. And then that's prophecy. You know, it's not necessarily a, a supernatural thing. It's just kind of like historical materialism from the from the earlier perspective. I don't know. This just uh... also on a more spiritual level. That's not necessarily Christian. Also, yeah. I mean, like, I've had visions that have come true. Like, like specific instances, specific instances I saw come true on the news. Now, when I have visions, it was seeing the future from the perspective I was going to see it. So I was watching the news. I had a dream about watching the news of something happening, right? Yeah. Now, like, there, there's one specifically a boat that was trying to uh, get into Palestine to feed uh, folks in the Israeli Mossad, like, propelled down and fucking took the boat. I Like, I saw that in a vision years before I was literally locked up and watched it on the news happen. So, like, I do believe there's things like like that, regardless of whatever religion or God is, right? So it could really be, like, a vision that this person had, and because they were, like, Messianic, Jewish, or Christian, or whatever you want to call it, they, they s- described it to their God, or whatever, you know what I mean? Uh, and I, I don't know, I'm just saying, I'm not, I wasn't really trying to go deep into Revelations like I'm kind of going, but, like, I mean, the ripping and tearing of the earth, and some of the things that are described in there, we're really making it happen. And it also could be yeah. the whole f- self-fulfilling prophecy, too. Like, we, we've we been seeking it for a millennia, and now we're fucking causing it. It could be that, too. But regardless... There are, indeed, things, powerful Christo-fascist people who desperately want, like, the Bible to be fulfilled in, like, a secular way, where they want, like, nuclear war and Israel to, like, you, you know you know what I'm talking about. There's like these like right wing Christian people that have a lot of money and power that are actually trying to have the Bible fulfilled. So that also terror. Yeah, you're, you're right. There could definitely be a self fulfilling prophecy. By the way, SCH, I mean, thank ever... you so much for the donation. Okay. Oh, did we ever think it was gonna be normal to see red skies? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. And now we've got like the fucking face of Mars over in the West Coast. So yeah, like yeah, true. smoke, 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 bleach in the skies red. We never thought that was really gonna happen. It did. <laughs> I'm saying, it did. I'm. No, we live into this shit. You know what I mean? I, so it's it is freaky. Um, absolutely. But what's not freaky is the is the wonderful generous donation from SCH. Thank you for donating 420. That gets you a dab. It says get better BP. I agree. How are how are you feeling, BP? By the way, are you, I hope you're not in your in, end of days. <laughs> that I mean, was a terrible dark humor joke, but I mean it's been uh, it's been up and down. Sometimes I feel fucked up. Sometimes I feel weird. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. And that's all I can say. Have you, I mean, have you I, been able to get better treatment yet? Or uh, not? Yeah, I got the pills. Part of it's my fault though. I just keep um, forgetting to call that number. I gotta call it because they're not calling me like you're supposed to. So uh, yeah. I get like kind of. Uh, my ADHD beginning me sometimes. It's like detrimental. Oh, oh. I'm like, God, is, damn it! This is not help. Write it down. Come on, put a, put a string around your finger. We got that's important. Um. <laughs> yeah, no, for real. I mean, it is. It is. It is. It is. And I, I'm not trying to sleep on it. It's just uh, there's a certain time period that I'm supposed to call, and I just keep forgetting to do with that time. I know. I know. I'm bad at keeping I have time. That same situation. I'm bad at. Keeping I'm the time. same way with my ADHD. Yeah. So, I might. Yeah. But anyways. I don't talk too much about that, but I will try to make sure I get on tomorrow for sure. And call these people you, for the well, that's four good. weeks up. But I hope you, I hope, yeah, I hope you get you. I hope you get the healthcare that you like absolutely need, deserve, and um, if not, I still got you enough need pills. To figure out how to how to seize it for you. <laughs> I still got enough pills, uh, so I should be able to get in there before those run out, and then hopefully have like maybe they'll put this, some stuff on my chest or something. I don't know. But uh, mm-hmm. oh yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to put a lot of effort into losing weight right now. I'm trying to. do all things that I think I can do to minimize risk, but you know, eating healthy. I keep is thinking possible. about starting to work out again. I haven't worked out since before I got COVID. Like once I got COVID, I like could not work out. And then a lot of people were telling me that you shouldn't do any cardio. I don't know if this is true or not, but people were freaking out because they were saying you shouldn't do cardio for like a month after you stop having symptoms. And I'm like, because they said that if you do try to do cardio and you're not fully healed, and you might think you're fully healed, but you're not. And they said like. It could like really fuck up your lungs. And I'm like already very paranoid about my lungs. So I, and also I'm just like na- lazy by nature. So I use that as an excuse to not work out for a while. But um, yeah, I'm at the point now where I think I need to start getting back on the horse. And um, yeah, I mean, it's just everything's, time. I feel you, if you, for me, it's just that everything is difficult and I'm bad at getting back on the horse. So it's a double yeah. thing because sometimes it's just like, it depends. Like, it depends on the time of the day because sometimes, 
I'm fine. Other times I'm like, it's hard just to walk around. You know what I mean? And so I just yeah. feel like it's, you know, I don't, don't want to scare anybody, but you know, it is what it is at this point and trying to get these things figured out, you know? Uh, just, yeah. Well, keep, keep fighting for your health. Cause I know that like, I've had a lot of friends and family who have had health problems and they have to be very strong self-advocates in the USA because like yeah. the system will not just take care of you. You have got to like fight for it, which sucks. Cause I've been there when I've been sick and like couldn't even get out of bed from like a fucking ear infection, but I'm still having to like self advocate because no one else is going to do it for you. There's nobody that's going to like be in your corner unless you're lucky enough to have like a, you know, that family member or something. But most people don't, you know, a lot of people don't have anything like that. So um, yeah, make sure yeah, you, you stick up for yourself. Yeah, you know, man. It's, it's part of it's like my, 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 uh, uh, neurodivergence too makes it really difficult sometimes yeah. and, and i know i know yeah. i seem like really high functioning for people but some things are bad like i'm bad with internet commu- like uh online communication and i'm bad with like calling people and shit like that i'm really not oh, uh, yeah. good at i'm not good at being able to do those those things and it's, it's like the executive function shit you know what i mean it's, just, it's like it's that shit you know what i mean so it's, it's hard to do that's with. what people don't like realize ADHD yeah plus other shit yeah plus yeah. other shit so I got ADHD and I got bipolar and I might be autistic and list goes on. I have like a long page of diagnosis, believe it or not. I know everybody probably thinks I'm just really smart and normal, which I try to do think I'm smart. But like as far as my – I'm definitely super neurodivergent. I've just been off medication since I was 16 by my choice and learned how to navigate it but by will. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's, you know, some things. Uh, it might be able to navigate in some ways, but otherwise I really struggle and I don't want to go back on med- medication to just fix it. I really need help, but like that there's no help like either. You can't be like, yo, I need someone to help support me, get my my the patterns that aren't functioning into a space where they're functional. But you can't really mm-hmm. get that out here unless you're like full on not even go full on counseling. It's just it's still not helpful. They don't really do anything. <laughs> so oh, I know. Yeah. It took me years to find a counselor that could actually help me. And I had to do it in Vietnam. I finally found a socialist psychologist that was actually able to like contextualize my problems with like society. <laughs> you know I'll what I mean? Because like look. yeah. Oh, oh, sorry, my bad. I interrupted you my fault. I no, it's okay. I'm I am i am just rambling. No, no, I'll say I'll be a buck. I, I had more help dealing with my neurodivergence from uh, a blind uh, Buddhist monk that came into prison than I ever got from any counseling just from wow. like going through the like meditation and like mindfulness exercises. Oh, yeah. But it's still like, you know, if you, especially if you don't have people to support you to keep that up, then you, it's still even hard to keep that up, which is, you know, you might progress, but you also will stay in it if you don't keep it up. And it's hard to function, especially when you're without support, right? When you, when I can win prison, at least I can go down there and see her like at least, at least once a week and, and uh, she'd she, like, you know, it helped me stay on point. But yeah, the, the meditation is totally key for me. I think what people don't realize, too, is that like because I've had a lot of people who've asked me, they've, you know, they come in and they're like, hey, I want to start a YouTube channel or a stream or something like that. But like, it's not easy for me like it is for you. Like they're watching my show and they're like, it's not easy for me like it is for you to like get in front of a camera. I'm like, you don't realize that after I stream for two hours, I'm fucking wiped out and exhausted for the rest of the day. Like it takes all of our like i'm sure big villainous is probably an element of this with you because it sounds like we have a lot in common as far as our neurodivergence and that sort of thing but it's like yeah i mean like it takes a lot to put on this show it takes a lot to like have this much and you know i I don't have the greatest concentration or focus but what i do muster like wipes me out so um it's really just an illusion (laughs) that we actually like have any capacity to do this I mean, yeah, and for me, it's, like, all about the chemistry when it comes to streaming, right? Like, today was really yeah. easy because the chemistry was perfect. But if the chemistry right, is a little right. more r- rough, we're not, like, the, the the best fit of personalities for whatever reason. If it's just – or if we're just having off days, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It, it can be really, really wiping. Like, right now, I don't feel like I'm going to be wiped just because it was, like – it kind of re- it was an yeah. invigorating conversation. But not all conversations are that way. Even conversations that I think are important sometimes are always that way. You know what I mean? It was like, oh, God, kind of, like – taking energy away you know what i mean it just depends for me but like, like i do feel you it, it, i can talk a lot and once i got used to being on camera it was okay you know what i mean yeah um, yeah yeah I, um, can, I can roll i could i could do it but it's just like it's just it takes a lot of energy to just be on because you know i'm not usually sitting up like i don't i know i don't have the best posture but like just sitting up for like two hours is like kind of physically exhausting for me. yeah <laughs> definitely. i'm usually in a, a hammock lot. most of the day or uh or, or a computer chair like like just uh, un- yeah, no un- lie. Uncompressed, <laughs> and I think we probably both got like physical shit too, because I know I do, and that should be yeah. Like, I got sitting back here, be... neck, my neck's yeah. fucked today. 
yeah. Yeah, I'd be having back issues. So, it, like, actually, some some sitting up like this would just be like hard, especially right now on this chair because uh, I got a basic chair right now. I'm like, oh my god, this is so uncomfortable. But I'm making oh, these work. chairs are the worst. It's time to retire <laughs> these chairs. I got one of them is held together with zip ties. But you know, hopefully we'll be hopefully we'll be upgrading soon. Um, I wasn't able to borrow my roommate's chair anymore, but I, I got the gaming chairs on the way, so that'll be Ooh. cool. Now that yeah, is I mean, an investment. That's worth the money right there. Yeah, I mean, because I, I, I'm actually going to be here till at least February now, just because of not only health, but just because I realize like I'm coming up on like Christmas and shit. That and for me, that's a really hard time mental health wise. So, right. like as far as like being. I don't want to say too much. On Actually, I'm uh, devolved in too much right now. Uh, just because, you know, <laughs> you know, I don't know who's all watching. You know, I, mean? I don't want to say all my exactly. personal shit. But, like, you know, it's, it's just a hard time for me. You know what I mean? So uh, it would be good to be here, even if my health is figured out by then. Hopefully, we'll get this whole, the hard thing figured out and figure out, like, what I got to do Um, uh, But by that point. But still, I'll probably be trying to chill through the holidays, through my mental health decline, so I can, like, you know, get on the other end of it and be like, all right, ready to go. So. Brett's right, though, by the way, a little teaser for next week. Next week's dialectic, we're going to be talking about art, disability, capitalism, and the dialectic and the intersection between all those things. So if this stuff is interesting to you and you're watching us maybe for the first time, please consider subscribing to our channels. We are simulcasting on Overthrow Media and Non-Compete, my channel. Uh, if you want to watch the archive of our old streams, you can watch them. You can watch the old, old ones over at Non-Compete Live. And we are also streaming them on uh, Big Villainous's channel, Overthrow Media, as well. I'll put those links in the description. Uh, they are already in the description, <laughs> that is to say. Um, so be sure to subscribe. But, um, yeah, we're, we're pretty much out of time here. Um, do you want to tease? Uh, you got any, any cool videos that you just put out or that are coming up that you want to okay, so promo? I want to, of course, plug uh, my gun control Nothing. video. I mean, it's super, super, oh, super. Oh, the gun control one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit, it's a little bit old, uh, older, but you know, I want to super plug that and say, please watch it, share it. I feel mm -hmm. like it was like definitely one of uh, uh, my little. I put a lot of energy into that one more so than most videos. Um, but I also dropped the uh, 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 mopping the floor with Jimmy Dore video where we just you oh, know yeah. address some of these weird claims they were making. Um, and it seems like people like it. You know, uh, didn't get uh, a lot of like. Uh, uh, Support from the bit I didn't ask them to, so it's not because of a lack of love, but from some of the bigger, bigger uh, YouTubers that are that we fuck with, but uh, which I didn't really want it to be, to be clear. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's still doing pretty good because I, uh, you know, people like drama, people like drama. I know, I know, <laughs> it's always the that's always what the 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 people want, and it makes me sad that my most viewed videos are always the ones where I'm you know, the ones that I don't want to make are the ones that get the most views. See, but, yeah, the thing is, like, it's going to be like, it's like this. Uh, and I was talking to you about it, too. Like, I'm trying to go through the whole uh, one video for me, one video for uh, people already subscribe, fuck with me, my people fuck with me, you know what I mean, already. And one pe video for the algorithm. I'm going to try that pattern. I'm, I'm I like that idea, by the way. I'm, I'm going to steal that idea. I'm trying to think of one for the algorithm right now, because the last one I did was very much for me. Um, so I guess I'll plug that my most recent video is on trans power and building trans power. Uh, there's a lot of legislation right now against LGBTQ plus community. So if you want to watch the video where I talk about how we shouldn't just be like asking for rights, we should be building power. And to, to me, that includes uh, working with people who are marginalized in other ways. And also, of course, having class consciousness and building towards a socialist revolution. So if you want to, if that, if that sounds interesting to you, uh, check out my most recent video on trans power at youtube.com slash now compete, but also definitely recommend you watch uh, mop in the floor with Jimmy with Jimmy door over on uh, overthrow media, because it's not just a uh, eye opening and, and interesting and has a lot of great history in it, but it's also very funny, <laughs> which is what little bill was talking about earlier. Like you gotta make people laugh to rope him in. He did a great job with that. So. Uh, I think, thank you. Uh, uh, yeah, and also, uh, if you don't know, I'm a rapper, so go buy ha The House of Usher, and also, watch out, um, I will actually push the album um, uh, back, I mean, obviously, uh, um, Devil's Gambit, to, it won't be the next one, but watch out for the uh, Five Rings, which was originally going to be the next one, and it's back to being the next one, so uh, it's going to be coming out in, uh, I don't know, next few months, hopefully, so, uh, just want to throw it out there, but check out The House of Usher if you haven't, check out my hip-hop fuck with that and uh also fuck with fight toxic prisons there's a lot of storms happening so we'll probably be having some more phone zaps coming up to try to push evacuations in uh 
in the prisons that are in evacuation zones that they don't like to evacuate. So um, just throwing it out there too. Hell yeah, hell yeah. We got some last second donations, by the way. Theo Rona said, wishing you all a happy, a rapid recovery and complete healing. 100% echo that. Um, that? Big there soon. Um, the Troutiness just said something nice. Uh, you fellas rock. <laughs> I love that avatar, by the way. That's a very Trouty avatar. Um, thank you so much, the Troutiness. We appreciate you. We also got a donation. One more donation from I'm Me. Thanks so much. It says, um, I found the thing I'd read and I put that up on... Uh, on screen there. So it's the sesquiotica is the name of the blog. And there's the article turning the other cheek. I'll drop the link to that in the description as well. So thanks so much for your support. I'm me. Um, let's see. I think that must be it, right? I think I read all the donos. We've, we've plugged everything. So be sure to come back next week for the dialectic when we talk about art, disability, and capitalism. Be sure to check out. Are you going to have sex Sundays uh, this Sunday, right? Uh okay, uh not a hundred uh yet, but uh I, I plan to. So keep an eye out. I'll make an announcement if it doesn't happen. Um, I don't okay. have a guest for this Sunday yet, so um we'll figure it out. I might do a solo one, but those are a little bit shorter usually. But who knows? Maybe I'll make okay. it two hours, but we, we might do a solo one. Um, so yeah. All right. Well, that's 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 gonna be over at Overthrow Media Sunday night. You'll be able to watch broadcast here on Non Compete. And yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. Please be safe out there and uh, let us know what you think. If you're watching this in the VODs later, please leave a comment, like it, turn on notifications, all that shit. It does help. We appreciate you so much. And we'll see you next time. Have fun. Peace.